You say that. When you go to chemistry school, you became more alert. You made wake up. Your spirit wake up. And you became a more human being. That's your character is built in a school. study what we call classical studies. Uh, you may, we must know Medu nature, you see. Maybe in the future we need to know some meritic too. We need to know Medu nature. achievement in commit for me is education. The way they think, they build, and they practice their education is very unique in history. Without education, I believe there will be no commit. ATM Hotep. Peace. This is your brother Wujao, and you are now tuned in to the Seshu Ma'ani Meadow Nature YouTube channel. Shortened down to the Seshu because everybody previously had butchered the name of our channel. So we shortened it um, based on the recommendation. We shortened it to the Seshu. So welcome to the Seshu channel. Again, Reni Wujau Min Ib Erimaat. My name is Wujau Min Ib Erimaat. Or just Wujau. Not Wuja or Wujaru or and all the other things. <laughs> it's Wujau. Wujau. Anyway, but um, hopefully everyone is enjoying the holidays for those who celebrate the holidays. Um, hope you're enjoying yourself. Hope you're being safe and having a good time. Um, so happy Easter to those who um, celebrate Easter and um, and the rest of the holidays themselves from Good Friday. Um, it was Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, uh, Easter, and so on. All right. So hopefully everyone is enjoying themselves. So. As you can see the title of this video, it is the racial uh, lens. And as you can see on the screen, the um, racial lens, what I mean by racial lens, the, the glasses of race or the lens of race. And so this is an open discussion, uh, Kim, and Kim and Chill series open discussion. And it's a continuation of the conversation that I started yesterday, last night. And that conversation last night was actually a continuation or just a brief after party from the um, earlier video yesterday from the Real Black Atheist channel with the brother Bobby West, formerly known as the brother Unk. 
And so it's just a continuation. So today is, is no different. Just continuing conversation. I had mentioned last night that I would go live today to continue the conversation and just kind of um, interact with the chat or on the panel. So the panel link has been pinned up by um, the co-host, Emi Kataku Kinshai. And in fact, where is she? Need to pop her in here now. All right, MBK, you have any um, any words you want to say? Uh, ho tap, ho tap, who I bet e many imiket. Um, yeah, um, not right now. Just hoping that um everybody utilizes the panel link today, and uh, so that we can have like a really good discussion because this is um an ongoing topic that just refuses to, to die but i guess it's good that we have to uh reiterate all this kind of stuff so that people just if it didn't sink in the first time that people you know get to understand it uh with time so i'm just looking forward to having the discussion All right. Yes. All right. So again, welcome to the channel. Um, just give a few shout outs to those who I can see in the chat. If you're in the chat, you know, um, give a greeting. So I know that you're there and that you're uh, listening in. But the panel link has been posted and it's been pinned to the top. All right. So that's the panel link. If you want to jump on the panel and share your thoughts and comment and comments on the topic. So. Again, this is a continue continuation of the topic um, that I started last night, which is a continuation of a further topic, which in the big scheme of things is an ongoing, as Emiket said, it's an ongoing discussion. Um, and we have a word for those topics that never seem to die. Those are those are called zombie topics. You know, a zombie is a is a person who who is undead, who refuses to die. You know, no matter what you do to a zombie. It will uh, fall down. You think you killed it and then it just pops back up, you know, five minutes later. Depends on which which <laughs> depends on which movie you're watching. Uh, the zombie will pop back up um, and keep it keep it moving. And so likewise, these topics um, have the same life. So we call them zombie topics. All right. So I uh, want to shout out to um, Sumo peace to you and as a matter of fact uh what flag is that sumo that you have there um it's small and i'm not i don't recognize it uh the flag off the top and forgive my ignorance uh or you know the fact that i cannot see it as being so small it looks like uganda but i could be wrong so maybe you can let us know shout out um you know, represent. I know you're representing. Or may not be Uganda. Yeah, so I know not to shout anything out until we are sure. Because I don't, that could be offensive. Like, what do you mean, Uganda? Imagine if I said Kenya. People would be like, no, it's not Kenya. But anyway, um, Oh, Zim Zimbabwe. Okay, there we go. So I was incorrect. All right. Some some birdie floating around told me uh, Uganda, and and I I repeated it. <laughs> yeah. So, um. So shout out to Sumo, shout out to Buxy. All the way out there in London. Yep, Zimbabwe. Um, all the way out there in London. Buxy is from London, so it's got to be late over there. I believe it's like what seven hours ahead five no five hours i believe so it's definitely late over there so appreciate you uh being up uh brother boom well who else we got zane 
so far so so far so good and we have the brother chris on the panel i'm gonna pass the mic to chris real quick since he jumped on the panel you know i always give people anybody who jumps on the panel i give um you know i give them priority over people in the chat that's just how we do it over here because you know the preference is people to jump on the panel that way we can have a conversation rather than typing back and forth and things like that all right I'm trying to kill the the fear and the paranoia of people coming on the panel all right this is a safe zone you're not going to get judged or vilified for your thoughts and and commentary all right we keep it straight we shoot it straight and we don't take things personal and neither should you um so there you have it. so chris what's going on what's up what's up not much man just chilling chilling how, how how was your easter did you did you um did you drink the wine and um and eat the uh the body of of christ and the uh, blood i ate the body of a fish, fish and some broccoli <laughs> <laughs> fish and broccoli yeah. all right all right all right uh about yeah. easter eggs did you did you uh hunt down some easter eggs in the, in the backyard nah. or anything Nah, but I think I'm gonna go to Walgreens tomorrow though and hit that chocolate up. I'm sure they're gonna put it on sale. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I did see that. But you know what's interesting about Easter is, but I guess this is true for all holidays. So I, so it's it's definitely a bias on my part, or a limitation on my part. But I remember, um, just in general, being young, all of the holidays were 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 a big deal. You know, um, it was just a big deal. But even as an adult, I can say just lately, it seems more so right now than than even when I was an adult earlier, um, like year, a few years back, that these holidays seem to diminish. And I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't argue anything about that, but it just seems that way to me. And maybe it's just me and, and my day to day, um, how things go. Like, I, I, I just don't see the 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 um what do you call it the spirit the 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 vast spirit of these holidays like i used to you know i've been stopped celebrating you know certain things um but at least i would still see it around me but now i don't, I don't see it as much like easter and i and i went out i was out today and and easter didn't seem like it was easter today like like from what i remember you know so I don't know. Maybe that's where I am and just me. Um, Cause I'm sure there's places where people go all out, dressed in their Sunday best. They go to church and they do everything, and you see that. But I didn't see that. Go to the grocery store, um, Walmart. You know, Walmart. Now this is the thing. I don't know how far Walmart Walmart stores go around the country. Because I never heard of a Walmart until I moved down south to Georgia. I never heard of Walmart before. But I don't know if that was because Walmart is fairly new or what. I don't I'm not too sure, but I know it started by Sam Walton and and the the Walton family, which is where you get Walmart from and Sam's Club, but I don't know the history of it. And so I don't know if it's like a new store. So when I moved down here then it then it was big and popular, or it's just a a, a older store that just is only located in the south. But regardless, I go to Walmart and um, I don't see anything reflecting Easter other than what you just said, the um, chocolate bunnies and and stuff like that leading up to it. But other than that, I didn't see people like the people are not dressed, you know, whatever the case is. Matter of fact, Walmart's down here uh, referred to as Club Walmart. You you go to any given a certain Walmart, man. You would think you minus the music, you would think you're at a club. The way that people are dressed and everything. So I don't know. Um, where you at again, Chris? I'm in Tuscaloosa right now, Alabama. Oh, Alabama. Okay, they got Walmart. Yeah. Walmart's out there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They have me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. When I was yeah. in Chicago last too, um, they got a few on the north side of Chicago. Okay, so Walmart is pretty much spread out everywhere. Okay, I did. Yeah, I never heard of Walmart. Never. Heard. I th I I chalked it up to like stores like Piggly Wiggly. Like I never heard of a Piggly Wiggly until I moved down to Georgia. A 
Piggly Wiggly, Ingles. Like, what's that? Because I'm from, you know, Washington, D.C., DMV area where we have Safeway. And you know what's crazy is that when I when I say these when I say the names of these stores now that I'm that I'm removed from from the area and I've and I've been removed for for quite some time now the names sound funny now like Safeway like who would who would call a grocery store Safeway like Safeway and then there's a grocery store called Giant and as I say it right now, it sounds funny to me, but but back in the day, that was normal. Like, I, w- I wouldn't think twice. I wouldn't even think anything of it. I'd be like, I'm, go- I'm going to Giant. I'm going to Safeway. You know, pick up some bread from Safeway. Go to Giant, Safeway, and, and stuff like that. So it's, 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 I don't know. That's just how it is. Wally World, yep. We call it Wally World. Walmart, Wally World. Going to Wally World. So anyway, shout out to Zane, shout out to Sean P, shout out to Teddy Wasama Rasa Neferu. And who else we have in the in the building? I guess that's it so far. So anyway, again, um just kind of small talking right now for a second. Um and I'm gonna jump into the con a continuation of the conversation about um the issue of race that I was talking about last night. You know, again, last night I said I was gonna go live today. To continue the conversation because there were some comments in the in the chat that I just didn't get to see at the time. As a matter of fact, let me stop. Um, just distracting, pulsating um, <laughs> thing in the background here. All right. So, yeah. So, I'm just going to continue the conversation. And if you didn't check out the video, the video is from last night. It's on our channel here. And it's a continuation of of um, Bobby West, formerly known as uh, Brother Unk's channel, The Real Black Atheist, when he was talking about racism and early Egyptology. And so I kind of took that and went in a different direction, similar direction with with just race, racism, period. Just just the whole conversation revolving around race all the time. And I think that that is very problematic and it's detrimental to our progress. And that's what I was expressing last night. And I will continue to do so unapologetically. I've always done that and I will continue to do that. But I just want to hear your thoughts on, on these things. We have the brother Desharab, um, popping in Hotep. So anyway, um, so what, other than that, what's going on, uh, Chris? Well, uh, as far as the topic go, let, let me let you, um, what do you think about, because I know you, I think you popped in last night as well. And I know you're already familiar with the conversations that where race comes up in, in, in into the conversation. So what are, you, what are your uh, summary thoughts on all of that good stuff? Yeah, um to kind of kind of sidetrack just a little bit. Um, one time, once before, we were saying how, well, I was saying how, um, for me, once I started, and then I'll, I'll tie back around. Um, when I started hanging out with, when I was in Chicago, for example, um, hanging out with, 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 with Yoruba and with Igbos, and how we all black now, dark skinned black, right? So you learn the language a little bit, you hobnob with them, you know, you, you chop it up with them. Now, they, they'll love you now. You're learning their culture. But to, to prove that color don't, don't mean anything. When the time is right, it always boils back down to, well, wait a minute, man. You're American, really. You know what I'm saying? So having said that, mm-hmm. um, I, used to be, I used to be part of this group where you got brothers who live in Uganda. You have some uh, Jamaicans who live in Ethiopia. You got some American blacks who moved to Sudan. Now, that we moved to these places. We embraced the culture. You know, we speak the language, and it seems like from what, they, from what I've been told, at least for the ones who live there, if you come there and try to act like a Ugandan or act like a Sudanese or act like an Ethiopian, you're kind of frowned upon. You can embrace the culture, that's fine. You can speak the language, that's fine. But, yo, you American, man. But we all black, though. Mm-hmm. We all black. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so, for, so for me, I, I was kind of hard-headed. I had to be put in the culture. 
with them, literally, for them to kind of tell me, with respectfully though, that hey man, look, you're no matter what your phenotype is, but you're a, you're American. Mm. You know, you're American. We appreciate you. We love you, but you're American. So for me, that 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 did it for me. And I think you were saying one time how that's not necessary, and I, and I agree with you. But you know, I'm I, at that time I was the kind of person where. I just kind of really didn't believe it. I had to be put into the environment, you know, live with them for a little while, you know, date some sisters who were African, you know what I mean? To, for me to get kicked down, kind of sort mm-hmm. of get my feelings hurt, get put in my place, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. But then after they did that, though, it was still love. You know, they, they didn't treat me any different, but when the time was convenient, like, yo, man, uh, you came over here on a ship, you know what I mean? You know, uh, <laughs> Right. You're, you're African, maybe you look like us, but you're not an African, though. You know, mm-hmm. in, in the sense of, you know, country, like you discussed in the last conversation, you got the genetic thing and you have the cultural aspect of it. You know, right. It was, it was always made, it was made known to me. So it was, it was made, brought to my attention at times to kind of, you know, to, to kind of check the situation. Yeah, well, what you just say, said is is just a further testimony to the reality. And I think that we have to dance with the reality and to not do so we either we suffer from cognitive dissonance or delusion and i think both are at play you know with with many of us and i use the us in air quotes you know i think that people are in denial of the reality and the consequences of these things and so but we don't mind it because it still happens in favor of almost like just being drunk with it. And and it's similar to someone who wants to escape reality by um, drinking themselves to death or turning to drugs and whatnot. And so what we tend to do is treat these, these um, thoughts and beliefs as a drug, you know, as some kind of opioid to escape the reality and so that's these are the things that I encourage us to talk about. I think it needs to be talked about. I think we need to have some some very, you know, some well thought out, level headed conversations where no one is, you know, um, shunned, demonized, vilified for sharing their thoughts on these topics. But I do believe that these topics need to be um, structured and and executed, you know, these conversations. And so, you know, I'm always looking for these conversations in, in that kind of environment, not the not not too much the willy nilly ones, because they seem to be circular um, all the time. And, I, you know, every now and then when I do see a conversation pop up, I'll try to chime in and then I'll see it go left. And then I'll be like, all right, well, I'll just excuse myself from the conversation because I can't take too many um, th- too many of those situations serious, you know, um, when it goes beyond its 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 entertainment value for me, I'm like, all right, I'm out, you know. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's that's where I am with with that. But I would like to I like to have these conversations in a more serious matter manner, in terms of like trying to solve a problem, you know. These these like uh, problem solving, you know. I like conversations that that have that kind of feel to it, solving a problem. But if people don't see it as a problem in the first place, then you're never gonna even think to see it see anything as a as a problem solving or to go down that road so yeah but yeah what you described is um sounds like that to me it makes more of a confirmation of that but anyway so i'm just gonna kind of just let's you know take what you said and jump into um into the discussion you know about race so let me um so now now check this out i i have the panel link in the chat any and everyone is welcome on the panel. Uh, first come, first serve. We can get 10 people in here at any given time. So feel free to come on the panel. And those who come on the panel, you get um, pushed to the front of the interaction. But I am going to do my best to, to um, watch the chat and interact with everybody in the chat as well. So if you have a comment or a question, highlight um, the sesshu, like at the, swe- the sesshu. So it could stick stick out, okay. Otherwise, because you know we all know that these chats have a life of their own, and and you all may be talking to each other, 
And then if, if I have to read every single comment, it takes a long time. So if you have something to bring to my attention, but you can't or you don't want to come on the panel for whatever reason, uh, make sure you at the Seshu, which is the channel name. All right. Then I'll be able to see it. It'll stick out. Or you can give a uh, super chat donation and um, we'll definitely see it. <laughs> Excuse me. But um, yeah. And that's another thing. You know, people tell me that I should um, solicit donations and, and people actually get mad that I don't and I and I and I don't. But, you know, I'm leaning more and more towards, you know, I, I don't refuse them, but I'm leaning more towards um, being convinced that we should do that because I get see you all don't don't know, but I get inbox and email um, quite a bit from from various different people that I know them from Facebook or they watch the YouTube, some of the YouTube videos and even the websites. And I get these emails and sometimes I don't know where, you know, where they're coming from, but they're they're asking questions. And they and they and, you know, I can tell many of them are genuine, you know, uh, inquiries. They want to know certain things. And I and and it's frustrating to me because I don't have the time to address um, these and respond the way I, w I would like to. And so sometimes I have to give like these quick response, quick answers, these summary answers. And I really want to like dive in and go in, but I don't have the time. And so that's why it makes more and more sense that, um, you know, people telling me that I should solicit uh, free will offerings, donations or whatever the case is um, to kind of offset time because I don't have time because I got to do other things, you know, day to day things. But soliciting soliciting funds and things like that may may. Um, offset some of those things so anyway so i'm 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 tossing that around just just you know to let you all know who um who've been watching and been uh hanging out and i appreciate everybody who's hanging out so anyway let me take the chat off the screen i can still see the chat but i'm just gonna take it off the screen for a minute and get into the um discussion kind of bring everybody up to speed on the discussion so Again, the title of this discussion is one. It's an open discussion, Q and A, or what have you. But it's um, would have would have focus on the racial lens, and um, and so on the screen, you you know, you have the open discussion, the option microphone that we pass it around for, to everybody. But we have a pair of glasses with um, that represents the racial lens, and so. What I mean by that is that a lot of the conversations that come up in the uh, conscious communities, uh, circus community, as I like to call it, uh, social community, it's always, uh, well, I will not say always, it's often seen and spoken of through the lens of race. So it's almost as if everybody has these racial glasses on and they're seeing everything through these glasses. And then that's what um, the conversations end up being about. And um, so that's why I have glasses with the word race on it, racial lens. All right. And my stance on that is that it is problematic. And I will go further and say it's detrimental to our progress because it's very, very shallow and narrow, and it's, it's preventative. It prevents us from seeing other things and other realities that, that um, we would otherwise see and have to be dealt with and, and um, address, okay? And, um, and, but it's hard. Now, I don't know if you all are, are um, remember, there's a movie called They Live, and so, you know, I, and I and I wish this I wish this um, I wish YouTube had didn't have this latency, this this delay, because you know I like I like interaction. You know, I'm, I'm, I'll call you out in a minute. But how many of y'all in the chat remember the movie They Live with with um, Roddy Roddy Piper is in it. Um, the other actor, uh, I just remember Roddy Roddy Piper because. Cause he's a he was a wrestler, and and for him to be acting is like a shock, 
or whatever. But but it's it's a movie called They Live. And um, anyway, if you're familiar or you're not familiar, the gist of the movie is that these aliens took over the planet and they had everybody under a hypnotic spell. And and the hypnotic spell was ingrained in in the fabric of of um, the culture of, of society and it was the norm but somebody discovered this this these lenses these glasses these sunglasses that if you put them on the the signal of the, of this spell this this signal that was um, being broadcast that put everybody under this hypnotic spell the lenses would break the spell and you can see things for what they are when you have the glasses on and I remember the scene where it's Roddy Roddy Piper and then the um the other actor, the court the black actor, I forget his name. Man, I, I forget his name. But they had a fight because he was trying to force him to put the glasses on, be like, you know, I want you to see what I'm saying, you know, and they had a fight and they put the and he finally put the glasses on. He was like, What? What's going on? And so anyway, so if you if you look at the billboards, um, advertisement, marketing, you go into the grocery store store. You see everything for what it, for what it is, and it's all suggestive, suggestive uh, wording. Like you know, you're looking at a billboard. It, it really says buy Coca Cola, buy popcorn, buy this, buy that. But but if you take the glasses off, you just see a, a normal advertisement and don't think anything of it. And same thing with the people. You can tell who's a human and who was the alien when you had these glasses on. All right. So anyway. Um, Oh, okay, Rasan. Uh, Rasan came in and out. I didn't even see Rasan. I'm in short time for the night. I have to be up extremely early. Okay, so yeah, Rasan came in. He said he had to leave out. Okay, I, I'm just now seeing him. So, but anyway, that movie, uh, they live. So the the you know so anyway so in the spirit of that movie or whatever the, these racial lenses this is this is the opposite that's going on here. So if you're familiar with the movie and in my example I just gave, the racial lens is the opposite. So we tend to put these racial lenses on. Um, and it's through putting on these glasses, these racial lenses that we put ourselves under hypnosis. OK, so it's the opposite of the movie. I'm, I'm only referencing the movie. If you're familiar with it, you'll, you'll get it. All right. You'll get my. Um, comparison but it's the opposite it's the 180 it's the opposite so we we put these glasses these racial glasses on and now we see everything through the lens of race and i'm telling you that's detrimental it stagnates our progress in studying history studying all branches all sub branches of anthropology all of the cognitive um disciplines um especially all of the anthropological um disciplines we tend to throw these lenses of race on and then we just get blocked. We get stuck. We get stuck. We in quicksand. We know we don't even know. We just sinking and just chatting, talking, having fun, entertaining each other. Meanwhile, we just sinking and sinking and sinking and sinking. Eventually, we just going to run out of breath, run out of air and suffocate. And that's going to be a wrap. And so that's my stance. That's what's happening. And so this is what I mean by racial lens. So my stance is that we need to remove them. Whereas in the movie I, I referenced, um, they wanted to put the glasses on to break the spell. But I'm saying remove the, these glasses to break the spell. All right. We have to do that in order to make any progress. And just if you don't understand or, or agree with what I'm saying right now, just do 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 some due diligence and just observe the different conversations over the past year two years four years back just peruse the youtube streets the different platforms that you subscribe to that you favor and and you watch and just listen to the conversations and listen how many times race dictates the conversation it comes up and then it and then and then it becomes the f axis of the conversation where everything revolves around that and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about the conversation goes nowhere when that occurs. All right. And so that's um, 
the gist of my you know my stance and everything like that so um so and you know and having said that uh let me see i'm going to share something here give you all a little a little lesson here so <clears throat> In, in in many of these discussions on on these different platforms, you have people that speak on different topics. You know, and YouTube has kind of changed the game. Uh, I mean, the Internet has definitely changed the game, period. Like, we all know that. The Internet has definitely changed the game without any doubt or whatsoever um, about that. But but even after the internet the onset of the of the internet itself and and the way that we could com communicate we had dial up and then from dial up we had um high speed internet and you, now we got fiber optics and all kinds of things so everything is getting faster and faster and faster then then cell phones we went from pagers to or beepers to cell phones to smartphones you know that flip phones where you know all you could do is all you could do is call it just had the the, the uh keypad that you type in a number and you call somebody to texting and everything like that sms now we got mms multimedia uh message messages and and things like that um so what this has allowed though is it has made the world a lot smaller and um and i always got to say this disclaimer i don't mean that literally because you know what you know what's crazy i i had somebody to try to argue with me that when i said i said i said this like i don't know when like in the past and somebody had the nerve to argue with me and said that i don't know what i'm talking about the world is getting smaller what do i mean by that and stuff i'm like are you serious um the earth is not shrinking but the world is getting smaller uh figuratively because the internet and this and our ability to communicate in real time with each other it's, it makes everybody accessible which figuratively is making the world smaller and but it makes it easier for information to get around but it's indiscriminate meaning that the information is is uh quick to to go viral and get around uh and 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 get exposure but that information could be completely wrong it could be true halfway true or what have you you know and the the ability to to spread information in such a rapid pace is outpacing the ability of all of us and i use the air quote us our ability to discern so what so what i mean by that is we're behind on our skill of discernment in the meantime, technology is making it easier and easier and easier to disseminate information. So we don't know if the information is accurate, true, false, up, down, left, right, in, out, um, et cetera, et cetera, um, because we haven't kept up in, in terms of our skill, the pace of our skill set of discernment, scientific method, research methodology qualitative versus quantitative deductive reasoning logic and all these things we're we're behind on that but yet we're we're quick to jump on the bandwagon of spreading information and so these youtube channels and platforms is um a gateway for all of this and so we have to be careful we have to own we have to realize that fact that's a reality that information can be spread real quick you could say something controversial and it'll go viral in a minute. Just look at that uh, sideways, that sideways dance. Um, I forgot what they, what the name that they gave it. That sideways gliding dance that that just took on, took off and, and went viral. Look at the ice challenge, the um, the cold ice bucket challenge that happened a year ago, two years ago, whatever. It went viral. Everything goes viral on Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, etc., Facebook. Everything goes viral. But what doesn't go viral is our ability to discern the skills necessary to discern live from Memorex, uh, true from falsehoods and things like that. So we have to be very, very careful, um, very, very careful with that. So let me get over to my cursor here. So what I want to show is this 
particular papyrus, and I'm going to make it make sense and relative to the conversation um, in a hot second. So this is a an image of the uh, what I refer to as the logic papyrus. Now, I don't think you're going to find that it being referred to as that anywhere else. I could, I, you know, somebody else could call it that. I don't I just don't know. But I call it that because of the name that is it is known by which is the mathematical the Rhine's mathematical papyrus uh which was it is dated to approximately uh 1650 BCE okay so that's what you may be familiar with this papyrus as um but I refer to it as the logical papyrus because math is a, is the domain of logic and I do that to drive that point home um that math is dealing with logic and um, or I refer to it as the Ahmos uh, Papyrus because he's the author of it. He signed it. And, you know, we need to give credit where credit is due. So it's the it's the Ahmos Logical Papyrus. That's what I call it. All right. So y'all start calling it that. Make make that go viral. The Ahmos Logical Papyrus. But anyway, the reason I'm bringing this up is because in this um, Papyrus. There are statements in the opening uh, statements that are rel rel relative and relevant to all these conversations, actually. So I'm just going to share it now. Um, let me turn on my trusty arrow here so y'all can see what I'm pointing at. Okay, so the papers begins um, over here on the left hand side. And you're going to read over here to the right. Now, I'm not going to do a, a, a language lesson or anything like that. So don't be don't be worried. Don't be scared. Um, I'm just giving you a little bit of FYI about the papyrus and what you're looking at. So it's read this way. The direction of the arrow is pointing. But what I have here on the next uh, screen is the opening line of that papyrus and transcribed into the formal Sesh Metonature, a.k.a. hieroglyphs. Um, in the hieroglyphic uh, system. So it begins with Tep Hesab Nihat in Ket Rek Netet Nebet. All right, so what does that translate to? It translates to the correct method of investigating nature to know all that exists. And the highlighted term in this opening phrase is, I mean, open, yeah, opening um, sentence is Tep Hesab which um, means correct method or being translated as correct method or best method. But the word tep itself is used as best or preferred. And it's like the, the tip or top. That's the easy way for you to rem remember because if you put an I or O as the vowel in between the T and the P consonants, you have tip and top. Okay. It's the preferred. So it would be equivalent to... Um, What's the what's the best part of a T-bone steak? What's that called? The um, I forgot what they call that. I don't eat steak. Any, uh, Chris, help me out because I, I I know you still be getting that you know the lamb chops and the, and the T-bone steaks and stuff like that. <laughs> uh yeah, oh yeah you you have to be right but uh <laughs> I mean the best part of the steak is uh that's the filet mignon cut is the probably one of that's the best the cut. But I'm saying, it, I'm a, in a T-bone, isn't, isn't it like one side is better than the other side? Like in the in the in the on the of the bone? Uh, nah, nah, not that I know of, no. Okay, all right. Well, I, I, all right. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I have to, I'm to ask my mother, man. My mother is a T-bone steak. Uh, she tell you all about a T-bone steak. Okay, but um, but anyway, so it's the preferred. So so tep is is a word that's used, you know, in context as preferred, you know. So. The word hesab is is the word that means an account, a reckoning, computation to to calculate something, okay, to figure something out, like crunching numbers and things like these are these are synonymous phrases that we use to this very day for the word hesab. And uh, now, when used together and in context, the phrase means correct method or accurate methods or rules of, okay. Now, the people I and I'm just reading reading on, and I. Don't like the fact that you all can't see my cursor, so I always got to use this arrow here. Um, the people of Kemet use a set of methods to arrive at 
knowledge, which is the word rek that you see here. And then the glyphs, uh, let me just point out a few of the words in the glyphs for those who are into the glyphs. Because I always, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be uh, doing this more often uh, to keep up with the classes and things that we have going on. People um, interested in learning language. So Tep Hesip are these uh, one, two, three, four first glyphs. Tep Hesip. Nihat. You have this glyph here. One, two, three, four, five. These five glyphs from where my arrow is is the word hat. Then we have M. Then we have Chet. Chet is one, two, three, four glyphs here. Then we have the word Rek, which is one, two, three. These three glyphs here, the open mouth placenta, as they call it. And the tied papyrus roll is the word Rek. Then we have Netet, which is these three glyphs. Oh, excuse me, three, four, five glyphs all together. And then we have Nebet, the last two glyphs. So that's just to give a rundown of which glyphs are what? What's what? All right. Tep, Hesib, Nihat, Emchet, Rek, Netet, Nebet. So now back down here. So um, the correct method is used in order for the remage to arrive at Rek, which is here. Rek, knowledge. These methods are expressed in various texts and generally correspond to the methods that are now described as the scientific method. Tephesib is a key factor in research, that's, that's important, as it employs a set of rules necessary for understanding things in all its aspects and phenomena. Okay, now the reason why I bring this up is because what's interesting is the word, the words hat and m is a phrase that means to go down. So if, if I point to it in the glyphs, you see, the, you see these glyphs here. It's one, two, three, four, five glyphs, which is the floor plan, the vulture, bread loaf, walking legs, and this X. Those glyphs constitute the word hat or hot. Then you have M, which is the owl, hot M. And that word is a, there's a classifier here, which is, which are the walking legs, which puts the word in a category of motion. There's some movement, whether it's literal or figurative, but there's movement involved. And so the word hot literally means to descend or to go down, to move down in a downward direction. So it's a spatial word. And the word M is a preposition. So it means to go downward in something. All right. So y'all, I want y'all to, to remember that is to move down into something. Now, what's interesting is we're talking about a method to do something, right? A correct method or rule, a rule to do something. And what is done is going down into something. But why? We 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 use a rule to go down into something to arrive at knowledge. Wreck. Knowledge of what? Netet nebet. All things in existence. Okay? So, the correct method is to pierce downward and go into something. And I'm going to keep emphasizing that. And you're going to see why. So, now to go on, um, here is a breakdown of each part of this sentence. So, we have tephesip, meaning correct method. The N or the water ripple here that you see is a genitive, which means belong to or of. Um, and then hat M is the phrase to descend into and is used in the context as as meaning to investigate something, to dig deep into into an issue, to question it, to probe it, to study it, to comprehend it by moving into it. OK. I can't emphasize that enough. Then you have ket, which are things. And then you have rek, and then netet, nebet, all that exists. All right. Now, all of this should sound familiar to us today because we, we use the same semantic um, flavor or character in when we describe stuff today uh, related to knowledge. Because if I say something that's profound, the average person is going to say, oh, that's deep. 
Now, why don't we say the opposite of deep? Why, why don't we say, oh, that's, that's high. But we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't go upward when, when we probe something. We go downward. Probing is a downward psychological movement. We won't go deep. We say, hey, that's deep. And we say, hey, I'm going to get down to the bottom of it. When, when, when we want to investigate a matter, if, if you have children and, and you come home and the dishes are, are, are broken all over the kitchen floor, you, you're going to argue and you're going to say, listen, we're going to get to the bottom of this. So I'm going to find out which one of y'all broke these dishes because none of the children want to snitch on each other. And the parents are going to be like, I'm going to get down to the bottom of this. We're going to get to the bottom of this, y'all. Give me, your, give me your cell phones. Give me your games. Give me, give me everything. Give me your TV. Give me your remote control. Give me everything until we get to the bottom of this. That's what parents do, right? And so we always go downward to find answers. It's always going down. We go down to find answers. And this is no different. Now, mind you, when was this written? This is written in um, roughly 1650. And it's a copy because Ahmo says in this text that he's copying something. And so that's why you have these two dates here, by the way, uh, 1850 BCE and 1650 BCE. So we're talking over 3000 years old and we're still using the same um, semant semantic shading uh, and character of, of uh, conveying the same thing to this very day. All right. So moving from here, because I want you all to follow what I'm what I'm saying. Moving from here, I want you all to understand something. That on the YouTube streets, on these Facebook platforms, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, a lot of the conversations stay above the surface. In the realm or domain of generalizations and summary. That's what you see here. Let me, um, let me get my trusty arrow. I got to I got to get my arrow out for y'all. I'm going to do a purple. So a lot of these conversations are at this level on YouTube. I don't care w what channel um you are, even our channel here. So I'm not I'm not making it seem like it's a uh, um I'm not trying to demonize it or or um anything like that. I'm just telling you what the reality is. Because YouTube is not the environment uh that is the best environment for um, real progress when it comes to these issues and these situations. But it's not to mean that YouTube is not useful. And I think that we should leverage it. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Technology is all good. I'm, you know, I'm a technology kid, uh, born and raised in a, in, in a whole computer thing. So I'm just saying that as a disclaimer because I don't want people to, to take my words and think I'm demonizing uh, any of this. But the reality is, is that a lot of the conversations that we do have on these platforms are generalized conversations. They're on the surface. They're above. Now, as the text told us just now, in order to arrive at real knowledge, at knowledge, for us to really get to know something, we have to go down. We have to go in a downward motion. And so, but what does that really mean? Like, what is the, what is the literal, what is, what is really going on when we do it? Because we know it's figurative to go down because we're not moving anywhere, really. But what, is, what does that really mean? Well, what it is, the reality behind that figurative expression is to move from generalizations to specificity or specific, uh, specification. We need to be very specific. And it's only when we're very specific that we start to gain more knowledge about any given thing. Okay, so we move from generalization downward into specification or specificity. All right. And so this is the idea of understanding something. You literally stand under the surface conversation to gain knowledge and so we say knowledge and understanding we kind of you try to use those interchangeably but really the goal is to understand something 
to comprehend. And the word comprehend comes from um, a word that means to um, possess something. To um, like apprehend, comprehend, to grab something, grasp. And it means to grasp it within the mind. And in order to grasp something in the mind, it has to, you have to be able to reach it. And so you pull something from the surface down in order to grab it in the mind. Hence, we now understand it. And this is, you know, uh, a, a uh, what do you call it? A, um, a pushback on people who like to use the word overstand. I used to argue with people who use the word overstand as if that's superior to understanding. You literally have people walking around here thinking that overstanding something is better than understanding something. When if you properly comprehend, as I said, these concepts, we know that understanding something would be superior to overstanding because overstanding is staying up here on, on the surface. Okay, we got to go under the hood. Under the hood to analyze okay and to run tests and things get under it we got to get under it so anyway that is what's really going on behind those figurative expressions okay so we're, we're basically going from general or summary to specifics all right now to illustrate this further i'm going to show you something that seems to be unrelated but you can be like oh snap okay now i want to show you something this is a chart um, related to biological taxonomy. Okay, this is in the realm of biology, but it's relevant to the conversation that I'm having right now. All right, to the point. Now, at the top, we're starting in generalizations. As we move down, we see this blue arrow, and I, I got to put on my other cursor arrow. So as we are up here, we're, we're general. As we move down, we're becoming specific. So I want you to notice something. When we're up here and speaking generally, it is an all-inclusion type of phenomena or, or, or deal or endeavor. We're, 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 we're including a whole bunch of things. It's very vague. Um, it's general, it's summary, it's all-inclusive, it's blurry, you know, and all that good stuff up here when you're up here so high. But as you move down, we're becoming more distinct, more specific, less vague. Um, um, we're, we're removing ambiguity. So up top, we can add the word ambiguity up here. So now let's get into what this is actually showing. So this is a, a, an example of a chart for a, a, uh, tax, taxonomic, a biological taxonomic chart for a dog, okay? Now, each row represents a level within the biological taxonomy. So we have domain as the top row, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus species and subspecies and as you move down we're getting more and more specific now the y-axis which is which is the column is is the rank we're going down in rank that's why you have the word rank here but i want you to notice something in the domain called eukarya we have several different organisms that are all in the category of eukarya. So we have a plant, we have insects, we have fish, rabbits, cats, foxes, jackals, wolves, and dogs. All of these are included in the domain of eukarya. Okay, so that's not very informative because it's a whole bunch of things in that, in that category. Now, as we move down, we have the kingdom and this particular kingdom that we're talking about is animalia, or we just simply say the animal kingdom. Okay. In the animal kingdom, one of the previous rows 
the items in the previous rows got excluded. Which one got excluded? It's the plant. Because the plant is not in the animal kingdom. It is in the plant kingdom. So moving down is, is in other words, moving down is an exclusionary process. You're, you're starting to exclude things. If you're starting down on the bottom and move your way upward, you're going through an inclusionary process. Okay, that's the difference. Moving down, exclude. Moving up, you're including. So as we move down, we're going to start ex excluding some of the things on the previous level. So what, what gets bumped out or, or eliminated is plants. So the animal kingdom includes insects, fish, rabbits, cats, foxes, jackals, wolves, and dogs. Now we're moving down to the phylum level. The phylum of chordata, which are, which are organisms that have a backbone, is um, everything that was in the animal kingdom except insects. So now insects are excluded from the chordata phylum. Everything else remains. We move down to class. This particular class, we're dealing with mammals or mammalia, or we just simply say mammals. But guess what? Fish are not mammals, so they get, they get excluded. But what's kept are rabbits, cats, fox, jackals, wolves, and dogs. Moving down further, the order. This particular order is carnivor uh, carnivora, the order of carnivora. Well, guess what? Rabbits get excluded. But cats, foxes, jackals, wolves, and dogs remain. Now we're down to family. Which family? Uh, Canidae. The family of Canidae. All right? But guess what? Cats belong to a different family. So they get excluded. So what's, what's kept are foxes, jackals, wolves, and dogs. Now we get into the genus. And the genus is Canis. Well, guess what? Foxes are not in the same genus. So they get bumped out. And we have left jackal, jackals, wolves, or dogs. Now we get to the species. Now we have Canis lupus. And by the way, species are bi binominal, which means they have two names, usually, for the most part. Um, so you have Canis canis lupus and so what's not a canis lupus is a jackal so it gets bumped out so now we're left with wolves and dogs and now a subspecies of cannabis cannabis i'm about to say cannabis a subspecies of canis lupus is canis lupus familiarius familiarius which are dogs Okay, so you see how dogs are in every category going up. But everything as we come down gets exclusion, exclusion, ex exclusionary. Okay, so this is the the moving from from vague and amb ambiguity down to spec specificity and removing ambiguity. Getting right down to a core distinct thing all right and we could do the same thing for humans i'm gonna skip it but this is the one for homo sapien sapien okay um and so you you all can take a uh, come back to this point take a screenshot and just have it for your notes but i'm not going to read through this but this will, this will be the one for humans and here's the one f uh comparing humans and cats going down the same process that i did okay to to name um to know the labels of each of these and where cats and humans part ways is at the order level the level of order just so y'all can see cats are in a uh, carnivora order and humans or homo sapiens sapiens is, is of the order of primates cats are not primates and humans are not uh carnivora okay that's where we that's where we part our ways Everything above it, we're the same. Mammals, chordata, animals, and eukarya. Okay, having a cell membrane and all that kind of stuff. Okay, but um, you all study that on your own. But okay, so now let's get back to the point. I, I wanted to kind of do that to jump back to the point of where I was in terms of um, this idea of moving from generalizations into specificity. 
Okay, so now how does this apply to race? All right, so now I'm gonna tie it all into race. When it comes to uh, race, and as I showed you all, these lenses are the devil. Okay, <laughs> this is the problem. Putting on the lens of race, what this does is it keeps us up here. It doesn't allow, it prevents us from going down into, into here, into specificity. Okay, it, it, it prevents that from happening. Now, here's the reason why. Because race, as we all should know, is one of the many social constructs. We have, we have many social constructs. Race is one of them. It is a modern social construct. The one, the one that we adhere to now is a modern social construct. And let me pause for a second and go back a little bit. The, the, the entire idea of race is a, is a natural, innate phenomenon that we as human beings do all day, every day. And, and what I mean by that is that it is our attempt to categorize things. We, we tend to look out in the world in our surroundings and in our relationship with nature and everything like that. And we, and we have this, this drive, this human drive to categorize things, to put things in categories based on similarities and dissimilarities. Those things which are similar, we will categorize together. Those things that are not similar, we will not categorize together. It's just as simple as that. One, two, three, A, B, C. Okay? And so race as a social construct is our attempt to group human, the human population into groups. But as with any group or any category what is inherent with 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 doing the, that procedure are rules and these rules are called inclusionary and exclusionary rules and that is inherent with a category you cannot have a category without both of those so for instance um male and female male and female are two distinct categories but there's a criteria that you have to match in order to be placed in one or the other okay and i'm gonna keep it simple because now with the with the uh with the tr you know we got the trans uh gender and 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 the non-gender stuff going on i'm definitely not trying to go into that conversation so i'm gonna keep this very very uh simple and just use um the xx and the XY to, to differentiate the two, okay, as a criteria, just, just, so, just, just to drive my point, to make my point. Um, with male and female, if you have an XY sex chromosome, if you have that pair, you're put into the category of male. If you have an XX chromosome pair, sex pair, you're put into the category of female. So I'm just trying to keep it simple. So what is the criteria? The criteria is laid out that that um, you are male if you have X, Y. You are female if you have X, X. So that's the criteria. So if you have X, X, you're excluded from the male, but you're included in the female category and vice versa. OK, very, very simple. Right. So. That's the inclusion exclusion. So race is a social method of human beings trying to categorize humanity or human populations like anything else. So that in and of itself is not wrong. That's something that we do all the time since humans have been humans, since we can remember. But what is it based on? Now, I can use biology like I just did for the for the male and female categories, but race 
is not you can't anchor race into something that is falsifiable that is um, biological or falsifiable or scientific. So this is why race is considered pseudoscientific because people try to act as though it's scientific, but it's really not. And that's the definition of pseudoscience. It's fake science. It's false science. The word pseudo means fake or false. And science is, um, you know, something coming about by way of the scientific method. No scientific method was used for people to categorize human beings in these group in these groupings that we call race, the races. OK, so that's pseudo scientific. So let's 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 let that sink in and marinate for a minute. It's pseudo scientific. OK. Um. But so what is the criteria for race, for the racial categories? It is very loose. It is broad. It is up here. It serves as a proxy. So what people are trying to do with it in knowing what I'm just saying, they're trying to make it scientific and they fail every single time. But the latest thing that you may hear um, on the YouTube streets or on social media or whatever, you're going to hear people bring up DNA. So you have a genomic level and then a um, phenotypic level. And then you have a level of just, uh, well, phenotypic will be features and include, broadly include skin color too. So you have a genomic level and phenotypic level that people are trying to anchor race, the concept of race into. They're trying to anchor and, 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 and tether it into that. But you can't. Now, phenotypic, um, more so, yes to that one, more so because the racial categories that we tend to, to judge people and place people into is based on lookership, looks, how someone looks. That's how it's used. And we just have to uh, accept that. That's the reality. Okay. Now, in the conversation I've, I've been having and what I will continue from last night is that the reason why it's detrimental to view all of these different discussions through the lens of doing that is one, we never get to the level of, of specificity. We don't get to the level of knowledge and understanding because we, we can't probe and go downward into it because we keep getting stuck at the higher level of race and it's vague it's unscientific and it's based around lookership which is very very subjective very subjective and i can prove it to you matter of fact let me do that real quick i want to prove it to you and i hope i have the picture right here readily and i do not but I'm definitely going to prove it to you. So I'm going to find it. I'm going to get the picture right now. So y'all bear with me one second. Y'all just be patient with me. And I'm going to show you in a hot second. I'm going to prove it to you how subjective this is. And um, and by the way, while I'm sharing my screen, you know, I, I'm, I'm not looking at the um, at the chat. So and I'm going to. Um, Look at the chat, you know, and allow some comments and stuff or question if you want to come on the panel. You can definitely do so. Come on the panel. But give me a moment. I'm going to find something uh, real quick here. Because I want to prove it to you. I want to prove what I'm saying to you. Uh, give me a hot second, hot second. Where is it? 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 Ah, here we go. Right here. I'm just going to paste it in. And be quick about it. Okay. So. I'm going to prove it to you right now. When it comes to race. How subjective it is. And how just open. How just kind of. Any way the wind blows. Uh, type of thing that it, that it can be. Okay. So I'm going to show you this picture right here. Um, wait a minute. Okay, here we go. Bam. All right, so y'all see that on the screen? 
Now, if you if now if you if you've been um, you know if you're familiar with 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 um, with me and and live streams that I've been on cameo appearances or on this channel, you've seen this picture before and and all that good stuff. If you haven't, then hey, it's your first time. Welcome to the party. Anyway, this picture is a picture that I use to make different points at different times. But for the sake of this conversation, I'm going to make this point using this picture. These two women here that we're looking at, if nobody gave any context and didn't prep you in any form or fashion and just asked you the question of what race would you put these two women in? The woman on the left, what race would you put her in? Category, racial category you put her in. What racial category would you put the the woman on the right in. Now, I've done this two years ago, three and two years ago. So so for, for like uh, a whole year or two years, I performed a social experiment using this picture and some other things. So I have data that I collected um, in my experiment that I conducted. And, and when I used this picture and asked that question, People gave different answers for the woman on the left, but they pretty much were in agreement with the woman on the right. But all of the people that I've tested, what they what they did was they put the two women in two different categories. Even if they didn't agree on which category the woman on the left should be in, it was definitely a different category than the woman on the right. OK, so racially what that what that showed, at least with with the test subjects in my social experiment, was that people see these two women within uh, two different racial categories. OK, now, once I've established that with these people, I then tell them that these two women are full blood twins. They're twins. They have the same mother and the same father. And they're twins. And when I say that to people, man, everybody just goes bananas. Like everybody's just like, what? It's hard to believe. Okay. And, and then that opens up a whole discussion. So I'm not trying to have that discussion right now. But my point here for bringing this up is to prove or support what I just said earlier. I said that race is a very subjective thing. And it just supports the fact that it's pseudoscientific. It's, it's, it's a proxy type of thing. It's not definitive. It's, it's vague. It's wherever the wind blows. It's how you wake up in the morning. If you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, you may say one thing. You wake up on another side, you're going to say something else. That's what race is. Okay. But these two women that you see on the screen are twins. They're not just sisters. They're twins. Here's another picture of them. They're twins. They have the same mother and the same father. Now, if you if you were to show pi pictures of these two women separately to somebody, they would never. And I've done this. Like I said, I've done this. You, nobody thought that they were sisters let alone twins. It's like, no way. Like, no way. You got to prove that to me. They don't even look like distant cousins. <laughs> right. But they are. Here's another picture of them. A full body shot. They're twins. And here's another one. All right. So anyway, I just want to show you all that to prove or, or support what I said. Because remember, demonstration beats conversation each and every time. Just to, just to show and prove that um, race is a very subjective thing to begin with. All right, so now let's get back on the, on the, um, on the, uh, on the topic. So, um, so when it comes to race and us keeping the, these, these racial lenses on, it puts us in a position of vagueness. It puts us in a position of being subjective where, where we will not grow into an objective conversation. And 
it's uh, unscientific. And everything I just said is problematic. Who wants to be unscientific? Who wants to be vague? Who wants to be amb ambiguous? Who wants to be, you know, wishy-washy, whichever way the wind blows, that's the way I go. Who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do that or should want to do that. Now, when it comes to knowledge, knowledge doesn't operate that way. All right. So I'm, I'm making a case of why these racial lenses need to be thrown in the trash when we're talking about um, these kinds of information. Now, where the racial lens is useful is in the reality of how people are leveraging the social construct of race, which is a real phenomenon that we um, actually fall victim to under racism, white supremacy, and, and all that kind of stuff. And we could talk about that another time as well. No problem. All right. But when it comes to information, history, um, hist 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 historiography, uh, anthropology, and all this other kind of stuff, it does not pan out. Put them up in the closet. Put your racial glasses up in the closet. Put them in, in, in the closet with your, with your other shoes, with your Kango hat, with your gazelles, and with your e earrings, your jewelry box. Put it away. Put it up. Your spare watches. Put it up. Put it in a dresser drawer. Don't wear them to the party of anthropological discussions and things like that. Don't do that. All right. So that's that's what I'm um, emphasizing here. OK, so now another thing that I said was that. Well, what I already said tonight is that race is a category as a is a is a um, uh, an endeavor of categorizing things. But in this case, race is to categorize human the human population. OK, there's seven point whatever billion people on the planet Earth right now and. The social construct of race is an attempt to categorize those seven plus billion people into these major categories. OK, now those categories. And the criteria have shifted. Or, or has have variations over time. But it still remains those categories, uh, the categories, even the labels for the categories. Change. So let's go back to, to my example about the XX and the XY chromosome. Now, the, the, the people that have an XX chromosome, they fit in one category. And people that have an XY uh, sexual chromosome, they fit another category. We happen to label those two categories male and female. That's the label we gave the category, the, 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 the tag, the label. All right. Now, if we were to change it, it doesn't change the reality of the rule. It just changes the label. So the point I'm getting at is no matter what we label these human social categories that we call race, they still remain the same in terms of the inclusion and exclusion rules. So we know that the racial categories were at one point all labeled with color terms you have black brown red yellow white black brown red yellow white all of humanity was at one point placed into one of those five racial categories based on whatever criteria the, the exclusion and inclusion rules for each of those categories. But those are the five. And over time, the labels changed. We don't really use um, brown and red and yellow too much. The, the main ones that have survived for the longest time is black and white. We have a, the black race and the white race. The other three, you know, is kind of got a little, little blurry. People don't use red and yellow and brown uh, anymore. For, for the other three, they started to switch to name continents. They say Asian or, you know, they start doing some funny stuff with, with those uh, Pacific Oceana 
and stuff like that. It started naming oceans and bodies of water instead of colors. But the black and white color terms, they have remained. Okay, black and then white. Now, with that, though, on the black, what was made synonymous is the word Africa. And on the white, what was made synonymous was the word Europe. So white and European became married to each other. And then black and African have become married to each other. All right. Just like Asian was married to yellow, but we don't even use yellow. But but the thing is, the, as far as a usage of a word, black and white is still very popular and used to this very day. Black and white. All right. But where does that what does that mean, though? What What's the meaning of it? Black. Is that enough? And let me switch the um, screen. Is that enough? Is is that down the, the scale enough for us to have an understanding or knowledge that's applicable and useful and the answer is no because for the reasons i gave already that one the entire concept of the social construct of race is unscientific which means it's pseudoscience science when people try to use it in a scientific way it's a proxy it's vague it's ambiguous and it's very subjective it's based on lookership People want to toss around the word phenotype and it trips me out how people you could tell people first learn learn uh, a word. They overuse it. Uh, phenotypical phenotypically. His skin is dark phenotypically or the structure of his nose his nose is at a 60 degree angle. The circumference of the of the opening of the nostril membrane um, is phenotypically um, astute. To that of an a black person, formerly known as a Negroid of the Negroid stock, not the Caucasoid stock, or not the Mongoloid stock, but the Negroid stock. <laughs> People start sound like Oswald Bates from uh from uh, In Living Color. <laughs> you could tell. Uh, you can also tell that uh, that is definitely not useful. Um, the word black because the same people who identify themselves as black when you sit down and and you have a conversation why it's like well can you can you um define can you elaborate what really is black that you identify with and then that's when he goes hey why are people bring west africa people bring kinky hair people bring nose as if every african is from west africa as if every african every black person has kinky hair as if every black person has a broad nose you know things that are just just way out there so you can tell that it's definitely a, a very very useless category you know a, a categorization system because even the people who define themselves as black really do not know what black means okay and i'm glad you said that because that brings me to another point and the use of the of the of a color term so now what I want to what I want to make a point with is is to kind of reiterate the points I make, you know, because, man, as, as I say everything I'm saying, you know, y'all have to kind of bear with me because I'm repeating myself so many times over the years that that I'm, I'm just forgetting the conversation that I had. Um, and as I say it, I just it just it just reminds me of of how long I've been saying this, this, and you know, it kind of stirs up a little bit of frustration a bit. But. Okay, this square that you see on the screen right now is the color black. Okay, and for those who are into computer graphics, this will be the hex hex number of this. This is how you would write it. It will be six zeros. All right. Anybody who deals with graphics knows should know that much, right? This is this is the color black. Now, here's a quick question. When we, and I use the word we in air quotes, with air quotes now, when we refer to ourselves as black, are, do we mean it literally? Are we this color black? And everybody should say no. I'm not even going to wait for you all to answer the question. The answer is no. We are not this color black. Okay, so. Us calling ourselves black is not for the in the literal sense of the word. 
and its color and what it represents, which is the color black. So then knowing that, why do we refer to ourselves or what does it mean to call ourselves black? And what it simply means is that we are voluntarily self-identifying with a category. So let me write, let me write the categories up on, up on the screen again. So we have white, yellow, red, brown, black. Okay. These are five color terms for racial categories. And so when we call ourselves black, it is not to identify with the actual color reality of the color. We are identifying as black to include ourselves voluntarily, by the way. We self identify as a member of this classification. I know y'all can't see my cursor anymore. We. We are accepting and proclaiming membership in a category that's been labeled black. That's what we're doing. And everyone ear at the that can hear the sound of my voice right now will never be able to refute that fact. That we are claiming membership in a category. So it is um, to our advantage to understand what is the inclusion and exclusion rules for these categories number one and two what are the benefits advantages and or disadvantages or the pros and cons of claiming membership in such a category do y'all follow what i'm saying that should be the question or a question, a prominent and important question to address. What does the category of black really mean? And what are the pros and cons of claiming membership in such a category? And how is it re related to, to what? To society and to everything else around us? These are these are um, are the points that we should be addressing. And this is what I'm getting to. I'm trying to prep everybody to actually move past the surface um, and the kind of naive way that we acquiesce to just saying we're black and I'm proud. I'm black and I'm proud. And this and that. What's up? The black man is God. The black woman is the goddess. You know, we're gods and goddesses and this and a third to really start. Um, putting on our critical thinking caps and think about this. What does it really mean? Now, so that's a question. So I'm going to put that question mark there. Boom. That's a question, right? Now, here's the, uh, uh, another, another point related to that is by proclaiming membership in the category called black, does that mean that everybody within the category who who self proclaims to be that are we the same? That's another question. Are we the same? And if the, your answer is yes or you believe yes, then what does that even mean? What are the pros and cons of that? How do people who are the same act? How should we act if we're the same? Are there rules and regulations on on the interactions of people who believe they are the same? Do people who believe they're the same kill one another, fight with one another? To the point of 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 taking lives and and robbing one another and doing all these other kinds of things, just doing negative and detrimental things to one another if a group of people really saw themselves as the same. Now, I'm not being now I don't want to be um, naive to 
to people the same because we can we we have a model of for this because for instance I'm going to give you an example cuz I know people who're going to listen to what I'm saying and then um start imagining things that I'm not saying so let's take a model as an example a a family household a family household where you have two parents and children everybody and their mother will consider that they're the same and we call that sameness family that's a family unit right we got a, a mother a father and let's say five children they're all the same they're the same family there are we and we even narrow down to a nuclear family that's a nuclear family unit now in the household you have siblings that will argue with each other and maybe even get into a wrestling match or a fight Parents will discipline their child. Children will mess up and do something crazy that, the, you know, break the rules of the household. Children may not do their chores. One, you know, somebody's supposed to wash the dishes. They didn't wash the dishes. And, and the parents have to discipline and so on and so forth. So I say that because I don't want people to think that that um, I'm naive to the um, the regular ongoings of a nuclear relationship between people who see themselves as the same. What I'm talking about, and I specifically mentioned, would that nuclear family, would you consider them family if one sibling killed the other sibling or parents just start killing their children or children kill their parents? Is that normal? Is that the way to go? If you see yourself as the same or as one family. The answer is no. I don't care how you slice and dice it or want to make excuses or try to or try to complicate the issue. The answer is no. So I'm now. So let's bring it back to the conversation about this flat blackness. Um. Everybody who considers themselves black, are we and I use air quotes again, are we the same? Or. Can there be subdivisions within that? Now, I'm going to fast forward and tell you the answers to those two questions. The answer is no, we're not the same on levels beneath. Now, when I say levels beneath, again, we're, we're moving from up here, going down. And to, and to reinforce what I'm saying, again, we're going from up here, down. We can start, we can start to exclude, exclude, exclude. OK, so I'm going to do that for you right here. And then I'm going to open it up. I'm going to pay attention to the chat and I'm going to open up the panel. Well, the panel, the panel has been open. So if you all want to pop in, you're more than welcome. But I'm going to uh, I want to show you something and then I'm going to I'm going to we're going to um, interact with the chat. So if you all want to bring something to my attention, you make sure you at the session. Don't do it just yet. I want to show you something first. So we're going to we're going to I'm going to show you what I mean by um, this level these levels so here we have black all right we have black at the top all right as a matter of fact let me and put that bold black at the top and um as a matter of fact though let me see something give me one second because I've, I've already done this let me just grab it i'm gonna save i'm gonna save some time I'm going to save some time Give me one second. One second, one second, one second. Let me grab this. I've already done it. I've already done it. Prevent me from doing double work. See that? Y'all about to put me to work. Y'all about to. Um, put me to work. OK. Oh, y'all need to see my screen again. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. OK, so I've already done this. So what I want y'all to see is that we have. Um, the the black race right so let me actually let me put that at the top the black race
All right. So we have the black race. Now, we're 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 doing we're we're doing this now. We're we're moving from from vague or generalization, vagueness and ambiguity, and we're moving downward to be more specific. Okay. As I mentioned to y'all, this is the way to go to arrive at knowledge, something useful. All right. Once you know better, you can do better. So we're moving from the top level and downward. So at the top, we have what's called the black race, the whole concept, the social construct of black race, black, everybody who's considered black. Right. So we have global blacks. This means everybody around the world who we would consider black. All right. So we have a lot of people around the world that we would consider black based on whatever criteria. And if, uh, most people use the skin, skin color. Right. You have black. They would consider black, 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 black. Right. Now. Beneath global blacks or world world blacks, we have blacks in um, Africa. We have blacks in America and we have blacks elsewhere. OK. Now we can further subdivide blacks in America into um, other subgroups. OK, so let's we can say um, black. Immigrants. We have black immigrants. And we have. And, I, and, I, and I'm using the the politically correct terms that we use today. So we have African Americans. So the blacks in America can further be subdivided into two main groups of blacks, two types of blacks within the racial category of black. Those are African-Americans and then people who immigrate, black immigrants. All right. And so in doing this, once we arrive here at African-Americans, I want you to notice something that we're moving from a level a vague race to a level of more specific ethnic group. OK, so you have humans. Then you have um, the vague race where humans are divided into these racial categories. Then you have. Um, so let me let me do that as well. Let me do that as well. So I'm going to take this away. So you have humanity. Right. Humanity is is um, you have the level of race. OK, we have that level. We have the level of nation we call nationality. We have the level of ethnicity. Um, and then we may have a level beneath that of clan okay so these are the um, hierarchical levels here and again in this in this downward movement we're, we're, we're moving from more general inclusionary and as we move down we're being more exclusive and more definitive or specific so the same applies here on what I just typed out, we have all humanity, which is everybody. That's seven point, almost eight billion people on the planet. Seven point whatever, seven point eight billion people on the planet Earth. That's that's at this level. We get to race. We can split them up into five categories: white uh, or black, brown, red, yellow, white. Right, based on whatever you know terms that we use today. Then we get into nationality. What nation are you a member of that would be your nationality semi um synonymous with country okay your nation then we get to ethnicity ethnicity is semi synonymous with tribe people don't like to use the word tribe because tribe connotes 
a a a pejorative or derogatory uh, sense, meaning, you know, backwards, no civilization, um, no technology. You know, tribal is like primitive in people's minds. So people don't like to use the word tribe too much. So people opt to rather use the word ethnic group or ethnicity. Ethnography. Then beneath that, you may have clans. OK, smaller um, groups, which are which are more so families. OK, now this is the hierarchy. And so. In keeping the same parallel um, issue for us, the race will be black. And I've done this before. Matter of fact, I, I've done this before. See, that's what I'm saying. This is what I mean by um, here. It is right here. Um, oh, and I forgot continent. So I've done this before. So for for quote unquote black people, us here in America, the air quote us, um, we have person one and person two. Just just to show you all and, and emphasize the difference. We have two people, person one and person two. The race of both person one and two is will be considered black. The continent that they live on for person one is North America. The continent for person two is Africa. The nationality of person one is American. The nationality of person two is Nigerian. The ethnicity of person one would be African-American and the ethnicity of person two would be Yoruba. So now what I want you to notice is, and I had this arrow here where efficacy starts. If we were to just stay at the level of race, that doesn't inform us enough about person one or two. All it tells us is a unscientific pseudo proxy that these two people are put into the same category. And that category happens to be called black. That's all that does. It's very shallow. It's not until we start to move downward. And again, I'm, I'm emphasizing that downward motion that the Egyptians spoke about. The Remish spoke about. Remember, which means the proper method in order to understand something or to know something is to go down. Is to move down. Now this is figurative. Psychologically we're moving down. We're probing. That's the only way we come to knowledge. So it's not until we do that. Do we arrive at knowledge? Now we're more knowledgeable about person one and person two. Once we know that this person two is Yoruba. And person one is African American. Now we know that they're two different people. They're distinct and this will inform us of their behavior, their their uh, expressions, their behavioral expressions, their interactions, because us knowing their ethnic designation will allow us to ascertain that distinction and that difference. We'll know why the Yoruba person does what he or she does versus the African-Americans do what he or she does. But on the level of black, if we just see them both as being black, we're going to be confused. We're going to expect them to do the same thing because they're both black. And that's not the case. African-Americans don't do the things that Yoruba people do. Now, obviously, because we're all human, we're going to have overlapping. All humans eat. So, yes, a Yoruba person is going to eat. An African-American is going to eat. But what they eat, how they fix their food, what's preference, what's preferential in terms of the cuisines and stuff like that are going to be different. How they treat the food. All right. So with that, um, I think I made the points I want to make and I'm going to um, open it up. Uh, and pay attention to the chat if you want to come on come on the panel i don't see anybody that came on the panel so you know i don't know if it's out of fear 
out of out of whatever i'm i'm a, i'm going to i'm going to pretend it's fear so i can start some trouble stop being scared yeah i'm going to be fear too cuz uh people are chatting yeah i'm not paying attention to the chat so let me turn the chat back on let me let me turn the chat back on and swap out this image y'all already had enough of my images y'all ha- y'all heard enough from me so now i'm going to go ahead and stop sharing sharing uh these things and i want you all, I'm going to interact with you all for a little while. Uh, we got 10 minutes up to a two hour mark. So go for it. So the floor is you all. So you all drive. You all drive. I'm in the passenger seat now. All right. I am in the passenger seat. So go for it. All right. We got Emmy Cat and Chris still in the building. I don't know if Chris still there, boy, because Chris. Chris be listening in and, and doing like five million things. Watch he on he gonna be like, no, I'm still here. Now you know what? I mentioned T Bone Steak. I bet you Chris went to the grocery store. <laughs> got a steak. He probably got that. He probably got that bad boy in the oven with some with some uh, mushrooms, some salt and pepper, some 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 all that good stuff. Some onions, some good gravy. Boiling some rice, some potatoes. <laughs> Ain't that right, Chris? <laughs> Chris probably got me on speaker. Don't blow the spot up. <laughs> anyway, so I'm, I'm paying attention to the chat, y'all. I'm paying attention to the chat. The panel link is in the chat. So let me scroll up, man. I, I know y'all don't have a. Should I scroll up, though? If you're going to do that, you might want to start from the top because. Yeah, uh, the latest ones might be more relevant. The latest ones that are, are most relevant? I'm saying with the amount of time you have, you might as well start with the latest ones because then it might be of what you just spoke of. All right, I'm going to scroll up just a little bit. I'm not going to start at the beginning, y'all, so I'm going to um, I'm gonna start with Donnie. I'm just going to keep on going down. So listen, uh, welcome to the channel. You know, if y'all tuned in while I was, while I was you know, going about my business of... Uh, uh, saying what I was saying. Shout out to everyone. I appreciate anybody tuned in. And happy Easter again. I, I said that at the beginning. For those of you who celebrate it or any of the holidays, you know, hope for you all being safe, having a good time, spending time with your family at the very least. You know, whether you celebrate the holiday or not, um, a lot of us take advantage of these um, moments to um, spend time with, you know, family and, and close relatives. So um, hope you all are doing that. All right, so, um, okay, I know you all are having a conversation among yourselves. I'm trying to just skip through. Now, me- remember, if you want to bring something to my attention, put at the Seshu so I can see it. Uh, let's see. Now, we got the brother James from Texas, but we got Pan-African Designs and Apparel. The brother James, good brother James. I know that these topics are definitely um, right up his alley. Uh, Cause James, boy, James will definitely, boy, James be like, well, with y'all, um, you know what I'm saying is that you gotta simplify it, man. You gotta simplify, it, brother. You got, you gotta make it plain to, you know. What I'm trying to say is we gotta keep things simple, you know, for the for 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 everybody to understand. And 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 the thing is, it's like, let me stop. See, <laughs> I get it. To, I get into a habit of trying to, y'all, y'all don't understand. You get, you come around me. I'm gonna try to mimic you. I don't know. I got a habit of doing that. Um, but it's in fun. But anyway, so yeah, James. Um, he said, "I'm not offended. I have five percent European DNA." Okay, y'all must be having a conversation among yourselves. Uh, let's see, Donnie. Okay, yeah, y'all are definitely having a conversation among yourselves. Goodness gracious. Okay, so Cedric. The brother, good brother Cedric, is in the house enjoying the discussion. Both time y'all catch up to the rest of us long gone past these ideas, cultures, defines a group faster than color. Definitely. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. Um, the frustrating part of this, which is something that I, I have learned to accept, is that we have to repeat ourselves. Because if you, you can go back into the archive, you can go back to my Facebook group uh, page and you'll see that I've been talking about this since 2010. So that's 12 years. I'm 12 years in this. And I'm saying the same things I've been saying. 
the same things I've been saying. So definitely. Um, Seshu, okay. Yeah, you had to put at the Seshu, but I, but I, I still see your, um, your comment. We have to make sure we educate all people because white people are educating all people with lies of white supremacy. True that. Definitely. We have to educate. And that's, and you know, that's what I'm about educating people. And I don't have time, but I, I, I do want to have a discussion on, on education, the, the methods of education, pedagogy and andragogy. Remember those two words. Pedagogy is connected to children or the youth and andragogy is connected to adults. Pedagogy is the science of teaching children and andragogy is the science of teaching adults. OK, and I want I do want to have a conversation about that. Um, what else we got here? Got brother Cedric again. I thought I had him up. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. Uh, not the things I find relevant. But glad. OK, yeah, y'all. Y'all definitely having a conversation. So, Emicat, um, if you saw something, you help me out here. But I'm, I'm just going to keep going down the list. Ramza, you're big. <laughs> OK, y'all definitely talking to each other. Uh, Ramza, Donnie, I can't dialogue with y'all on his topic. He, he's dope at, I'm a student level. Okay. Um, Philitis into unconscious. Okay, man, y'all are definitely, um, I'm not getting, I'm not understanding. Yeah, 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 y'all definitely having, um, as far as creating micro black cities and making things manifest in real time, I'm nice with it. Okay. Now, Ramza, if if I take your comment of what I think you're saying, um, that deserves a conversation as well. And, I, and I'm going to throw, throw something out there to, to prep it. Um, now, this is me personally. My personal stance and view of a lot of things that we complain about is that we're playing games. And the reason why I say this, and, I'm, and I shoot it straight, like, you know, I don't care if people get in their feelings, uh, you know, we, we can get over that and that's cool. But I think that we, the collective we, the air quote we, we're playing too many games. Because here's the thing, and I want to put this on everybody's mind. Out of all the things that we, we complain about as a people, right, in the United States of America, as African Americans, we have a lot of gripes and, and grievances and complaints that we have been um, expressing for decades, right? From civil rights, before civil rights, but, you know, the highlight or, or the popular civil rights entire movement and all the byproducts of civil rights, affirmative action, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? From even police brutality and all the discrimination, everything, right? Now. Here's the thing. There are roughly 45 million, quote unquote, black people in the United States. Out of that 45 million, it's about 38 million that are African-American versus the rest being black immigrants. But let's just stay on the level of the flat blackness. Let's not even go um, into the subcategories. Right. Let's just use black. So the 45 million black people in the United States. If we weren't playing games and if we were truly serious about our business, we would see and put forth an effort to demographically take over geog geographical territory. So, for instance, the state of Georgia has a population of 11 million people. And I know that because I live in Georgia. Now, Florida is next to Georgia. Alabama is next to Georgia. South Carolina is next to Georgia. Tennessee is next to Georgia. So if we were to take the total population as it exists right now of those states I just mentioned in the southeast of the United States of America, we could fit all 45 million, I believe, because I don't know the exact numbers. I just know uh, Georgia, 11 million. But I would imagine that the states I just named would be enough geographical territory to to hold a population of 45 million people. 
collectively. That would be Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, and Tennessee. And maybe North Carolina. Throw, throw North Carolina in there. Or whatever. If we need to. So. Do you, do you all understand the, the game changing thing that that would cause if we were to demographically take over that geographical space? And I'm not saying something fantas fantas uh, out of fantasy or make believe or or delusion. Demographic d uh, demographics change all the time, and I and I've had this conversation before where I show and prove where South Carolina was once dominated by black people, and then over time I show I show the um the stats how it got, was dominated at one point, then it slowly slowly flipped the other way. It went a whole 180. But my point is, is if all black people, all 45 million black people were to start to migrate. And I'm not saying overnight or anything like that. I'm, I'm being very realistic. And, you know, I'm not giving any details, but I'm just saying just imagine if all black people in the United States of America started to migrate in the southeast of the United States. Keeping the state borders where they are and everything like that, the, the, the governmental structures, keeping them where they are. Imagine if demographically we took over these geographical spaces. By default, we would we would naturally fulfill the seats of responsibility, which means these governmental positions from governor on down. And remember, the governor is the is the chief executive officer of the state. It's the equivalent of the president of the United States, but on a state level. The governor. Um, then you have the the the, con the state Congress, the lawmakers, you have the judicial branch of the state, the court system, the superior courts. OK. So demographically, if we were to populate the southeast of the United States, we would naturally fulfill those seats of responsibility. I don't want to call them seats of power because that scares people, but seats of responsibility. And it's at that moment. Over time, when that occurs, we would then be able to have agency. And have interest and make laws, break laws, amend laws in our interest. And we could no longer blame the quote unquote white man. Or complain about this, complain about that, because our destiny will be in our own hands. From the governmental structure, the de demographics and 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 the environment, the actual geographical terrain and environment. So I say that to say that that deserves a whole conversation, but I say that to say that. This is why I'm saying we're playing games because migration, intentional migration has been done in history. It can be done. It has been done. But here's the problem with that. And I'm going to have a discussion about this with anybody, you know, later on. We have never defined the we to even begin those kind of thoughts of of setting forth a plan to do such a thing. Because we're not the same. At the level of black, it's not going to happen because black people, everybody who considers themselves black are not on the same page. You got black people who want to go elsewhere, leave the country. You got black people who think they're Hebrew Israelites. You got black people who think they're Moors. You got black people who think they're Bakongo. You got black people who think they're uh, Dravidians. You got black people who think they're aboriginals. But they're all black racially. So that so that at the level of black, that's never going to happen. Do y'all see my point? So the to function at the level of black is not conducive. It's detrimental. And I'm just supporting more and more of my points that I'm making. But we could talk about that another time. But um, but anyway, Ramza, I, I don't know if that, I don't know if you meant any of that, but I'm just 
uh, going for. Let me, let me try to help you get through these comments, boy. You can do this for an entire planet. What's the point? Okay, I'm not sure what that comment was going towards. That, that was, was about to me. the categories when you were doing the, the tiers for or, or the hierarchy for black and then you had nation and all that kind of stuff. So you were saying you could do that for all, you know, for the entire planet, I guess, categorize people. Well, I mean, duh, that's what I said. I, I said all of humanity. I even mentioned numbers. I said 7.8 billion people on the planet Earth. Um, the social construct of race is an attempt to place all humans in one of the racial categories. So I definitely said that you can, uh, you said I can do that for the entire planet. I mean, I thought I was very clear with that, that that's exactly what people are, are trying to do and what they do. Yeah, I guess the takeaway is that since you can actually do that for uh, people in the entire planet, it would be crazy for uh, for a group of people to think that you're not supposed to do that, that we just need to identify as a flat black when that is actually not done. As we've seen that uh, people actually do, uh, you can actually have the hierarchy all the way to the minute around the entire planet. But let me answer this question. So what's the point? So the first, so... Uh, Pan-African designs, the first part of your, your statement is something that I've already said. So your question is, what's the point? That's what I've been making tonight. The point is, is that at the level of race, it's stagnant, it's general, it's too ambiguous, it's too unscientific, it's too pseudoscience, it's too um, um, subjective. It's not very informative and you cannot get much done at that level. That's why we don't get much done at that level. And and what I didn't go into tonight was that the entire social construct of race as it stands today was created and leveraged by a group of people that are not um, in the same category as we would like to think we are in. And we're being taken advantage of based on it. And so for us to use it and buy into it, we do so at our own detriment. That's the point. Nobody in the world should identify themselves on a, on a level of race. That's so vague. Nobody does that. Nobody did that in, in, in history until we do. We're the ones that do that. We have been bamboozled under the doctrine of race. And we're the ones that use it. We're the ones that keep it uh, keep perpetuating that. Not to say it's not real and it's being used, but we're the ones that actually keep it at the forefront. The moment that we toss it in the trash, we will start seeing change. Guaranteed. That's the point. It doesn't inform you of anything. It doesn't inform you of anything. I'm trying to keep on going down. Uh, yeah, y'all having a, um, a conversation among yourselves. Okay, here's a question. So Donnie asked a question. Um, is there a Easter origin in Kemet like the elders are saying? Well, Donnie, that's a very, that's, that's a whole conversation in and of itself because you got to break down the elements of Easter. Um, what part of Easter are you talking about? The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ or the bunny rabbit or the eggs or what? Like what? You see, that's that's a um, that's a whole conversation to have. You got to break you got to break down which which part of Easter you talking about. Is it the buying of new clothes? Is it the dressing in white? Is it the going to church? Like which part of Easter? You know, we know Jesus is not a um, Egyptian character. Jesus is not a it's just not an Egyptian character. Um, Easter having an origin in Kemet. I don't, you know, in me, I, 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 I don't have a habit of getting involved in those in those conversations, because at the at the core center of those conversations is one thing sh is better than the other because dot dot dot. If Easter's origin is in Kemet, then Kemet is superior. That's the motivation driving those conversations. That's that's what I see. 
the takeaway from those conversations, even if it were true. Because it, it comes out like, okay, why are you a Christian? You should be an, a, a, a commission because your belief of the death and resurrection of Jesus you call Easter really came from Egypt. So why are you a, a Christian and not an, an ancient Egyptian or commission as they call themselves nowadays? That's really where that conversation is going. Won't you be that? Worship Horus. Worship, you know, Horus is Jesus or Usir is Jesus. Usir died and then he was resurrected. And then the uh, virgin, the um, Mary, the mother of Jesus and and the other Mary, the two, the Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus. That's really Osset and Nebit Hood. That's the two ladies that's at the foot and the head of, Osi of Osiris. So Osiris is your Jesus Christ. And then Mary, the mother is Isis. And then Mary Magdalene is Nebit Hood. That's the that's the gist of the conversation. You see, how I just did that. Conversation is done. It's done. There you have it. I just I just explained Easter to you. I'm joking, but I'm just saying. Um, that's real shallow. I mean, I, I, I don't I don't make a habit to get into that those conversations because it, it just ends up being one, you know, pro trying to show one is is um, superior than the other. OK, so we have uh, Conan Lee. There's a problem with the definition of race. Race is tied to a space as in Africoid, Africa, Caucasoid, Europe, and Mongoloid, Asia, using the three-tier definition. Um, I think I know what you mean, but but remember, Africoid, Mongoloid, Caucasoid, um, actually Negroid, Mongoloid, Caucasoid, those are terms that have kind of fizzled out of use. And it was dealing more so with um, bones and crania, uh, craniology and things like that. All right. Race. Um, then that, now that was part of it. So so that was part of what I said. I, I kind of see what you mean. That's part of it. But. Um, the definition of race. So you got to go back to race. Race um, specifically talked about just a distinction. Biologically, race would be defined as a species. It's closer to species or subspecies. If you if if you if you look at the um, biological ta uh, taxonomical chart, where you have those levels that I showed earlier, beneath species would be the word race, but they don't use the word race R A C E. They use the word subspecies. OK, just just to, um, as an FYI. But at the at the core of it, it's just a way of trying to distinguish one group from another based on a criteria. Um, all right, that's right. I'm trying to get through these. You all. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be as, as quick as I can. Well, Joe, what's all the Masonic stuff going on in your picture? Are you talking about my picture? Which, which picture? Who who sees Masonic stuff in in my picture? That picture? I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm gonna play dumb for a little bit. Cause I don't I don't think you see Masonic stuff. I don't think you are Masonically inclined to see Masonic stuff in my picture. That's right. I point out one thing that's Masonic in my picture, and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll um I'll bite. I'll bite your bait. <laughs> I'll bite it. Donnie, well, to answer your question, I'm a student as far as you and Bear. Okay, now that's they're having a conversation. Stop saying white supremacy is white lies and white magic. Well, he's definitely not talking to me because I did not say such a thing. Um, Ramsey, let me say Ramsey's. Ramza, uh, yes, Selena is an African American. Okay, only have about. 33,000 African Americans in my neck of the woods, but getting 27K of them reparations. Got to salute that. Not huge reparations, but he's okay. Y'all are having a, definitely a conversation on your own. See, this is why I don't pay attention to the chat while I'm showing things because you all will definitely go off and have your own conversation, which I don't, you know, I don't mind, but 
I'm trying to get through the actual questions. Would y'all capitalism will handle those differences? A sharp spirit, maybe you can elaborate on that. Um, because I said I said aloud, I'm not sure which one. Okay, that's right. Ukraine show race is not ambiguous. Yes, it is. Actually, it's the opposite. Deshreb, to to what the point that you made, you you actually you actually are one hundred eighty degrees. You're actually completely wrong. Ukraine um, is a country. Russia is a country. So Ukrainian nationals and Russian nationals are distinct people. Russia invaded Ukraine. They're at war Ukraine, killing people left and right. We see it. Um, civilians are being killed. They're showing, you know, whatever they're showing. Um, but we, on the level of race, we will call both Ukraine U Ukrainians and Russians, we will call both of those distinct people white. We will say they're of the same race. So you actually prove, you know, you're supporting the point being made. All right, let's keep it moving. Um, so exhausting, but needed. Okay, do this is in the house. Shout out to everybody who, who's coming in. You know, I didn't who I didn't shout out before, but I'm I'm trying to get through um, some comments or questions. Now, mind you, the the panel link is is in the chat. All right, so I'm going. I'm already over time. I'm trying to get through these questions. What about the term African when speaking about ancient people? This can be misleading also if you don't qualify African because it's another ambiguous term. Um, yes and no. Let me move the chat out the way so y'all can see. Um, yes and no, due diligence. Um, the term African is um, in a geographical sense is a is a locator so if we call a a an object or a person or an entity african we're locating them somewhere on the planet and there's nothing wrong with that so if i say um nigeria is in africa and you're talking about um ancient people ancient people didn't even use english so they so so they would not have said the 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 form of the word Africa and not even the word Nigeria for that matter. Um if I'm not mistaken. But these terms trigger and this is some this is why people have to understand and I have I have I have videos on explaining what language is and what words are because the concept attached to the form is what matters, not so much the form. It's the complete sign which is the form and the meaning and the link between the two. If I say that Nigeria is in Africa or ancient Nigerians lived in Africa, yes, chronologically, the ancient Nigerians would have never uttered the word Africa and they would not even have uttered the word Nigeria. But if I were to say the ancient Nigerians lived on the continent of Africa, the point is you you understand the concepts are at a match. It's a locator. Because here's now here's how you can prove it. Here's 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 how you can prove that that is OK, because you can falsify it. If I say the the ancient Nigerians lived in the Atlantic Ocean. Versus somebody saying the Nigerians lived on the continent of Africa, you can actually tell who's right, who's wrong. You can actually falsify one or the other. Be like, no, brother, the Nigerians did not live in the Atlantic Ocean. Nobody lives in the Atlantic Ocean. Except fish, aqua, uh, aqua life, or whatever, marine life. The Nigerians lived on the continent of Africa. So that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so it's not misleading at all. It's not misleading at all. Um, Africa is a landmass. 
and it is a designated landmass, which is a piece of geography and has uh, typography and geology and, and, and all that other kind of stuff. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. People, you would have to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to, you know, understand stuff like that. Not saying you, but people, anybody who's misled by that, you, you know, you almost you almost have to just kind of um, leave them alone because there's nothing to be confused about on that. Africa is a is a blatant continent on the planet Earth. Now, if you want to argue that they didn't use the word Africa and stuff like that, well, yeah, of course they didn't. But the landmass is still there. No matter what name you give it to it, give to it. Yeah, two things I want to say real quick before you close out. Um, definitely, when we talk about Africa, uh, you know, people already know within what, um, you know, uh, what scope we are working with. Either are we talking about Africa as in the continent itself, or and the people on the continent, or or Africa something that originates from the continent at some point. So uh, obviously, that is not something that needs to be explained to anybody um, in, in, in this day and age when, when uh, the word Africa or African is invoked. So I don't think anybody needs to be worried about something being misunderstood in that sense. And the second thing I was going to say is that uh, we might have to, for the first time, actually block somebody because I see Ramza. I'm not sure if you are he or a she, but you continue uh, insulting me on a chart. Uh, or for no reason, I'm going to have to actually block you. And you'll probably be the first person that we block over at this issue. Because if you have something to say to anybody, you need to figure out how to intelligently uh, put your point across instead of actually trying to insult people on a, uh, on a chat. I don't know why you, you're trying to pick on me, but you're not going to draw me out. One way or another, you're going to have to either um, learn how to communicate, whether you're writing it or join the panel. If you have something to say to me, I don't know what it is you want to say to me or what it is you want me to be attentive, atten attentive of about you, but continue and we'll definitely have to be to block you and you'll be definitely be the first person that we block on this channel. All right, land it, land it down. So due diligence, um, again, um, there's nothing wrong with uh, the term African in that sense um, when we're speaking about ancient people because the ancient people lived on a landmass that we now call Africa. So, um, again, but to kind of just expound a little bit more, um, as I said earlier, you start. We always start conversations on the surface level, but then we then we need the time to to drill down, which where we arrive to understanding and knowledge. That's what I demonstrated earlier, and I showed that on the screen, and everything. So, if we wanted to get become more specific and get into the nitty gritty of things, we can we can uh, dispense with the term African. We can dispense with um, all of these modern terms. And use the terms that are more closely related to the people that we're talking about, even the name of the people. And that's not a problem. But um, that's not something that you start with. You start with the surface and you work your way down. That's the formula. You, you, you start with the um, vague. And that's the same thing like when answering questions. When somebody asks a, ask a question, you answer, then you elaborate. So in, in, in normal discussions and you're trying to share information and whatnot, you have to start where people are familiar. Then you work into uncharted territory with the person. And that takes time. And that's what people need to have patience understand and understand the process. And I go through it all the time. I say things can't be microwaved. You know, I say, well, listen, let me give you the short. And, and you know, in, in, my, in my terminology, where I say it, y'all may, may have heard me say this a lot of times. I say, well, the short and skinny is, and I, that's how I term it. Well, the short and skinny of it is, is bam, 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 bam. But then I elaborate. And people accuse me of being iron lung and long winded because I like to elaborate. But it's in the elaboration where people actually gain um, way more insight. But anyway, so that's to kind of touch on what you were saying. Um, like, let's, let's take the ancient Egyptians, for example. Um, every time I say ancient Egyptians, we can fuss and fight about that because ancient Egyptians never called themselves ancient anything, let alone Egyptian. They didn't use the word ancient. They didn't use the word Egyptian. They didn't use any English word. So every English word out of my mouth 
as it relates to them, people can argue about. But how would we ever have a conversation if people actually did that? So that's number one. Number two is once you establish the um, antecedent to these terms or the concept behind the term and you have a meeting of the minds, then you're good to go. You, you, you can go further or, or what have you. And that's where people got to have an understanding of how words work. What is an actual word? So the ancient Egyptians is what people can understand. But then I say, well, hey, they call themselves the Remetch. Now people learn that who didn't know that at first. Now, now I can use that from that point forward. I can say Remetch, Remetch, Remetch. Ancient Egypt is called Tawi, 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 Kanu, 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 Kemet, Kemet, Kemet. I can start using these other terms once I, I set up the equation in people's minds. Then I can start using it. Hieroglyphs. No, they didn't call that that. They called it Seshmetu Netcher. They never called something hieratic. They never called uh, a writing system demotic. They called it Seshni Shot. But if I would have just shout out Seshni Shot, nobody would know what I'm talking about. Seshni Shot, what's that? But I say demotic because that's what people know right now. But then, I, but then I move over and say, you know, demotic was really called Seshni Shot by the ancient Egyptians themselves. Oops, the Remish themselves. You have the Remish, the Rakit, and the uh, Eripat. Those are three classes of people in ancient Egypt. People don't even know that. They heard Remish from us, from me, and from other people who mentioned it. Even the Egyptian language is called Rodney Kimmich. A lot of people don't even know that. So, I, so I'm saying this to say that, of course, we start off with the familiar terms and then we could work our way through it. So hopefully you understand that. Um, and I, and I, I believe you do. I'm just, I'm just using you to, uh, to say all of that. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. The next thing you were saying was um, African equals descent. African equals born on Africa. African equals culture. African equals generally black people. Those are different ways people think of African. But what you fail to do in your equa those e equations you set up separated by a comma was to define, was to show that African comes from Africa, which is a place. And nobody can deny that. Every, word, every example you're showing on the screen that I'm highlighting originates from the conceptualization of a place that we call Africa. So even the first one, African equal descent, that means that a person descends from, from a place that's called Africa. African born, which means that you are born on a, in a place that we call Africa. Africa culture is a culture that exists on a place that we call Africa, on a continent we call Africa. And then Africa with generally black people are people who dwell or domicile on a continent we call Africa. And that last one is where the confusion mostly lies right there. Because every human being um, originates from the continent of Africa. Every human being who is alive today can trace their ancestry back to the continent of Africa. So your first example, African descent, every human being alive right now is of African descent. And I dare anybody to, to, to have the audacity to even try to refute that statement. And I'm going to say the statement again. Every living human being is of African descent. And I dare anybody try to prove that wrong. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to keep going down. Yeah, I see Ramza, y'all y'all having a y'all having a party up in the chat. And I hope you took heed to what Emmy Kett was saying, because I'm not I'm not reading through all the comments. Uh, come on. OK, you've been warned. Yep. 
You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, yeah. Emmy Cat has a little impatience on that because me, I, uh, yeah, I see she has a clock running. Cause I, I, I would, I would have probably blocked you, and then said something like, you know, what I'm saying you ask, you, you, you execute, then ask questions later. <laughs> um, okay, that's right. The Rimage literally called it hieroglyphs. Uh, no, they didn't. That's false. Uh, let's see what else. Unless he's translating hieroglyphs or whatever it is. No, he said literally. See, you. you oh no, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I'm trying to give him leeway. No, <laughs> okay. No. Literally, yeah. yeah. You're right. Right now, nah, don't do that. No, nah, I'm saying, he said literally called it hieroglyphs, and no, they did not. And see, on this channel, we don't allow false information to get out if we can help it. And Desharab, you are incorrect and i don't want anybody to take you um take that statement and run with it that is false the remage did not call their writing system hieroglyphs they did not and if you think otherwise which you obviously do prove it right now by showing any primary source i challenge you right now to show any primary source that is ancient egyptian primary source where they called their writing systems system hieroglyphs do that for us all and and we'll accept it when you can't not if you can't when you can't i want you to come back and say my mistake my bad all right that's my challenge to you all right what else we got could it be that the butterfly left its cocoon prematurely? Um, I don't have no idea what that's about. From my knowledge, they, the so-called ancient Egyptians, called themselves Kamiu as well. Okay, um, Ubini Shepsu Ma'at. Um, I know the word you're, you're, you're referring to, Kometiu or Kamau, as um, either one of those, Kometiu or Kamau. And the ancient Egyptians, the, the most prolific word, if you were to do a, a, um, a statistical search of the corpus of all known Egyptian texts, you will find that the most prolific word that the ancient Egyptians use to refer to themselves is the word remich. The kamau is a word that does exist, but it was not a, a, a word that was used often at all. Even the word commit to you that, that we hear people use. The, um, the term is remage. The preferred term, the most prolific term used for themselves is remage. Okay, just to let you know. But the word kam kamau um, does exist. So, you know, we, we have to acknowledge its existence. But it's, that's definitely not a term that, um, that was used for the ancient Egyptians. When, when the ancient Egyptians wanted to refer, and I see you do diligence, I'm, I'm bringing in one second. Uh, when the ancient Egyptians uh, referred to themselves as, as a people for the purpose of distinct, distinguishing from other people, they always used the word, the term uh, remage, each and every time. All right, not Kamau or Kometiu or anything like that. They used the word remage. All right, so while I have this break here, I think uh, due diligence had it issue but um due diligence if you can hear me uh the mic is yours due diligence brother dd if you can hear me the mic is yours okay i don't know if you have any issues connection issues but feel free to, you know if you if you can get it together um feel free to interrupt me but i'm gonna keep on talking all right um let's see all right next one um their language the language they read write and spoke called medu might medu netra was the higher tier of the language um ubeni uh shepsuma all right his due diligence again he probably got a better connection can you hear me now but <laughs> now you dropped off both of them Okay, so back to your comment. Uh, the language they read, write, and spoke called uh, Medu uh, 
Ma'it. Uh, Meru Ma'it. Meru Netra was the higher tier of the language. Dude, can you hear me? Are you there? Peace, peace. Okay, yeah, there you go. All right, so I'm a, so uh, Ubani uh, Shepsu, I'm gonna come right back to this question, but I'm gonna give uh, Dude Dillerson a chance to to get his comment. Uh, I'm giving the mic for a second. So Dude Dillerson, welcome. Uh, what's on your mind? Appreciate you, Jawu. I just I feel like sometimes, like whenever we hear uh, academia having this conversation, and they say the Egyptians aren't black or the Egyptians aren't African. I don't think they mean it in the same way that we take it because a lot of times they don't qualify it. And I think whenever scholars talk about it, they're trying to keep everything in context. So when they say something like, or like we, when we say something like the ancient Egyptians are black, we know what we mean. But I think in scholarly, scholarly conversations, you really can't, you don't want to have those conversations like that. You know what I mean? And I know y'all speaking in a very general sense to the, to the broad public, but they still, but we still end up having these conversations on a scholarly level too. They still debating these, these, these topics, you know. So I just what? want to know. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What you, you no, want to ask something? Go ahead. No, that's generally. I just want to uh, bring that bring that to your attention and want to know how you feel about it. Okay, so here's the thing: um, whether we are whether we having a scholastic conversation among scholars or or in the public. Um, if given enough time, the whole thing can be squashed. It could, it could, it could be straightened out in, in, in one setting. And so when, when we hear people say that the ancient Egyptians are not African, in that context, in that sentence, when we, when we read it or see it, they're most likely talking about um, black Africa. Because you, we have to understand the context in which, scho in which scholars ha have, have um, created uh, when it comes to that, they have divided Africa into three pie pieces. Like if Africa was a piece of pie, was a pie, they have divided Africa into three sections. One is um, black Africa or what they call Africa proper, a.k.a. sub-Sahara Africa. And then they use um, then they have another piece of Africa called white Africa or a.k.a. supra Sahara Africa. And then the third piece is the Nile Valley, Africa. And so those are the three major, pe those are three pieces of Africa that scholars have created all the way going back to the 1800s. And it, it is from that, um, you know, uh, creation that the conversations still trickle down to this very day. So when people are saying the Egyptians are not African, they're using in a sense of Africa proper, sub-Saharan Africa, not in a sense of the continent the landmass called Africa. And, and and how we know that is because they they make a parallel statement by saying the Egyptians are not black. Because they because sub Saharan Africa is considered Africa proper and as well as black Africa. So they, so they're basically saying ancient Egypt and its people are not sub Saharan. And based on where they demarcated Africa uh the continent, they're correct. Egypt, the country of Egypt is not below the, the, the line of that would be considered sub-Sahara. <laughs> it's not below the Sahara. It's east. You know what I'm saying? So so the, these are trivial things that really shouldn't even be a part of the conversations anymore. And that and that and that's part of why I'm saying why I'm saying what I'm saying tonight completely. I'm saying we gotta throw all of that in the trash. I don't care if it's a scholar or not. I would tell a scholar to their face unapologetically not to run that that race BS in the conversation. I would say dispense with that. That's it. Like, don't bring up race. Like, I'm not asserting the Egyptians are one or the other. And I don't I don't need you to t assert one or the other. Let's talk about the Egyptians as they are and the culture and so on and so forth. Let's talk about who and what they are. Um, from what we can ascertain from the culture, the literature and the material culture, the archaeology and everything like that. Forget the superficial conversation about whether they black or not or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? That's that's that would be my approach if, if, if I were to confront a scholar, you know, like like those scholars that um that run that, especially like the um what's his name? The former um the former minister of um 
antiquity, um, Hawass, people like that. You know, if I if I had my way with him, he I would force him to actually deal with the um with what matters. You know what I'm saying? But but yeah, so yeah. so so the Africa um yeah, and based on your comment though, um based on your comment about Africa, if we keep it simple and we look at Africa as a geographical space on the planet as a landmass, then everything makes sense. Because like me, me, I'm, I'm, I'm not African because I'm not on the continent right now. I wasn't born there and, um, or any of that. I'm not, I'm not a member of an African society, whether we call it a country or anything like that. So me right now, I'm not African. Now I do have African descent. I have African ancestry, recent African ancestry. To put to put to put into a timeline thing, I have recent African ancestry, but I'm not African. I'm only African. There's two senses, and this is something I had an argument with um, Rob Bourne about, or actually, Rob Bourne argued for no reason about it. Africa, to to be African, is there there are two senses of the word, and let me just do this. Just bear with me one one quick second, um, because I know you're just about to say something, but let me see if I have this. Real quick, as I say this, I want to share um, this point. Okay, here it is right here. So um, I'm just going to share my screen again so everybody can see it. Um, and how did I hide that message? Okay, so we have, we have two what's called senses of the word African. And, and it's only two. One, in one sense, it deals on the, the left side with genetics and biology and DNA. On the right hand side, it deals with um, nation, country, politics, and all of that good stuff. Okay. And so if we were to look at the actual definition of an African as a noun, um, there are two senses. And we, we all should know how to use dictionaries, you know, as, as adults, right? We know that dictionaries have multiple entries or have an entry, then it has multiple senses and they're numbered. Sense number one, and then we have sense number two. Sense number one is African being defined as a native or inhabitant of Africa. And see, based on that number one, I'm not African because I'm not a native of the continent of Africa and I'm not an inhabitant of the continent of Africa. So based on sense number one, I can accurately and factually say that I'm not African. But now based on sense number two, which is a person, especially a black person, you see how they invoke race. So a, a person, especially of the black race of African ancestry. Now, based on sense number two, I am African. So you see, ju just in this one entry, I'm not African and I am African in, in the, in the, at the same time. And so if we just keep it simple like that, the conversations would not be a problem. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I and that's in, that's in the dictionary. Everybody has access to that. That's, that's, that's keeping it simple. I, I don't know how to make it more simple than that. And I don't understand, not you at all, but I'm saying um, the brother Rob Bourne, tried to argue with me on on this and i you know and that that like that's that's kind of um i shouldn't be surprised but i was a little surprised like well like what what is there to argue about that like it's right in your, in your face <laughs> yeah it's like looking up a word like for example a table in a dictionary you could find a table that's uh you know wooden made of funny you know something wooden that you place things on top of or you could make a table where you have columns and rows so you can say well if you're d discussing a particular table made of wood then in the second definition of columns and, and rows, it, it is not, the table is not that. But in the first definition where it's a wooden, um, you know, flat with four legs that people use to put things on, food on or eat on, uh, that will be the table. So people just got to know how, you know, def definitions work and where one applies and where one doesn't apply. Yeah, so yeah, what, are you, what are you about to say? No, it's, it's good because I appreciate how we uh reframing things because we have been given 
you know, did all this information, but it has been framed a certain way, you know, and I good, I, I believe that it's good that we try to reframe it from a Afrocentric perspective. And I, and I believe I don't have no issues with the way you identify or Rob, Rob Bourne identifies. And I think both of them are correct. Uh, Rob Bourne identifies, he starts off with his Africanness first. Like he puts his first in, because he takes everything in, into consideration. He, You know what I mean? So being that we lost our identity and he wants to present his Africanness first, and that's what he does. And that's what you do too. Like you resurrect an African culture. So I, I accept it and I don't see it conflicting with your ideals because you may put your American first, but respect and identify, uh, identify with your African descent and just see it that way. I don't see, see him as being opposed, but I do appreciate. Me, go ahead. Let me just say something. So you're 100 percent right. And see, that's what I mean by by I was surprised that Rob Bourne created an argument out of it because I never disagreed with um, with anything. And in fact, in the conversation I had with Rob Bourne on Garfield's channel, I asked him and Garfield to define African as they use it. And after Garfield and Rob Bourne gave their definition of what an African is and how they use it, I conceded. I said, based on you all's definition, I am African. And then I introduced the other sense of the word. And that's where the argument started, which which kind of surprised me. So 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 I agree with you. But this is the problem. This is this is what I don't like. I don't like when people make an argument for no reason. I don't like when people become adversarial. And I, and I think that's a, more of a New York thing where on, you know, on these platforms, people got to have some kind of drama or got to disagree just just to keep things going. And see, I don't get down like that. So so I don't see it uh, um, as a dis, as a disagreement um, either. And I was but I was trying to tell them that I was like, listen, we're, we're not in disagreement like you're not, and I told Rob Bourne, I said, you're not African and you are African at the same time, just like me. You're not African in the sense that you're not a member or a citizen of any Af of the 54 African countries. You do not dwell on the continent of Africa and you're not, you are not physically from the continent of Africa. Somebody in your lineage or ancestry is, and you have African ancestry or you descend from somebody from the continent, as do I. And based on that, you are African just as I am African. And see how that is? That, that's just real simple to understand. And that's, that's completely real simple to understand. correct. And I also think we're having the same issues when we talk about uh, antiquity also. You know what I'm saying? On um, people, people defining African in these ambiguous ways and it be correct in different, in different fields, in different fields, in different, you know what I mean? In different contexts. So it's, it's just a thing that we have to just keep on going through sadly but it's needed because things have been framed in a certain way and nobody but us has the right or the power to uh redefine these things as, as we think is correct so i appreciate the conversation yeah yeah well that's why we having these that's why i i would say we continue to have these conversations i i long for the day where we don't have to bring this up again but i also have accepted it and I push my frustration to the side where we do have to repeat these things um, every now and then because of of the potential um, thing. What I don't like, though, is is when I whenever I feel that people are kind of purposely keeping it, keeping it in a confused state instead of just uh -huh. dealing, dealing with with things and keeping it simple, because it really, really is simple. Because really, I'm going to tell you this. We are the ones who invented Africa. The, the concept of like like in your comment earlier when you had all those equal signs, mm -hmm. we invented that. When I say we, I'm talking about us in the diaspora. We we have created that. That's that's new. That's 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 ever since this transatlantic slave Holocaust type of thing. That's us doing that. Because remember, during the uh, transatlantic slave Holocaust, you had um, Africans. We had people, I should say distinct and different people from different ethnic groups on the west coast of the now called continent of africa being kidnapped and enslaved and transported to the americas right 
because of the common event and the common um, atrocities and the common enemy uh, called a slave owner, or whatever, we grew organically a, a unified identity. And we identified that because of the um, the the s systemic effort to remove our link back to the continent, which is our language, our identity and everything like that, because that was being systematically removed from us. We had to um, have a reaction into coming to a, a unified identity and we called that unified identity African. And so we are we are the first ones to become Africans. Which is which is which sounds ironic because it wasn't until we left Africa or our ancestors left Africa that we became Africans when the continent's <laughs> over there and we're over here. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's right. that's what people have to understand. Africans, there was no such thing as an African prior to the amalgamation of the enslaved um, ethnic groups from the continent coming here. And, and 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 amalgamating and, and, and conden consolidating into this identity called African. Now, Ujawa, whenever you say that, that's what I mean whenever I say it's kind of it's kind of uh, misleading it, or it can be misleading. I don't think people mean to. But whenever you say the ancient Egyptians are African because of what you just said right there. Yeah, but see, OK, and that's and, and I can see. But see, that's a that's an easy fix, because when I say the ancient Egyptians are African, I'm definitely not meaning African-American because African-Americans are really the only true Africans. Um, when we say the ancient Egyptians are African, we only use it in a geographical sense. They, they, they're on the continent of Africa. That's that's peace. I feel, I feel you for sure. And that's and that's that's just keep it simple. So I'm saying even if it sparks or triggers confusion that is an easy fix all you know all all, all we got to do is say a, a second sentence and say you know geographically african we, we could put an adjective right in front of it say uh, the ancient egyptians are geographically african i think that need to be a qualifier sometime because whenever these conversations come up we be having six different conversations at one time because it's not getting qualified and i'll be listening to you guys and I listen to everybody and I'll be seeing us jump in and out of these topics with different context and different, you know what I mean, connotations of, of the word. You know what I'm saying? You got negative connotations that come with it if people want to identify with these terms and, and such. So it just gets bogged down a lot. We go in and out of these of these frameworks, right, yeah. of these different words in different times, you know what I mean, trying to stay, you know, keeping everything in context. And it's trying to be scientific as hard as fuck when dealing with light men, light people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, so. here's the here's the thing to, to take it to take it a step. See, I, I take it a step further and I'm waiting for people to to um, I say catch up, but I don't mean catch up like I'm ahead. But I mean, I, I'm just waiting for people to, to get on the same page as me is that 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 doesn't inform us of anything because the the planet Earth has continents. And where something is from doesn't do much for us in terms of informing us of much. Whereas if we get into the culture of of a group of people or a person um, or, or their behavior as expressed by their membership of their ethnic group or culture, that gives us way more information than a continent that they're from. Right. And we'll, we'll, that's whenever I say Africans versus uh ancient egyptians and we had that discussion that would be my, my position when i say ancient egyptians are african i'm denoting culturally not geographically well but see there is no such culture called african so when, when you, well, when you we, say when you say when you say ancient egyptians are african culturally you're, you're simply saying that the culture that the ancient Egyptians have exhibited or 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 were part of existed on the continent. Well, whenever I say when I say I say culturally, I mean that on the ethnic African continent, you have traditional practices. You have Maya that Di was showing that spread across the continent. You have we have you have. Uh, Practices that are contrary. I don't, I don't want to say contrary, 
what are different and people from the places that have settled in other places on other continents. So when I say African culture, we, we know what kind of culture comes from Africa in general. Well, yeah, you said and then we know what kind of culture. You, you know, you realize you said the same thing I said. You're you're saying you're saying the ancient Egyptians practiced a culture or lived a culture that is housed on the continent. That you, you said no, I'm not, I'm not. it is an African culture, and when you say that, you're you're just putting uh, you're saying that you know it is on the continent, and obviously you 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 are also drawing similarities within other African cultures to you know that emphasizes the fact that it is an an African culture. It's not Africa culture like there's only one culture, but it is an African culture. Correct. So what, what I'm saying what I'm saying is because whenever you said that you say. The ancient Egyptians are African ge geographically. I'm just saying whenever I use the term, is is cultural, definitively. And I'm not saying those were different. I'm just saying that's what I mean when I say, and that's how sometimes when we have these conversations, they can get bogged down because we said the same word and didn't qualify. That's the only reason why I said that. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no, but but what I'm trying to get you to see is even in what you're saying, you're saying the same thing though, because I when I. Okay, okay. So cuz when I when I say the ancient Egyptians are African geographically and then if and if you come behind and say, "Well, well the ancient Egyptians are African culturally." We're saying the same thing because the culture that you're talking about exists on the continent. And I'm saying the Egyptians themselves exist on the continent, which means their culture, the, their physical bodies, their burial grounds, <laughs> everything is on the continent. So, so, so we we already arrived that they're on there that they are on that same continent, you know, where that we call Africa today. And but see, like I said, I take it a step further, and I go as far as to say, um, that doesn't inform us of much, because it's like, okay, so what? They they dwelt on the landmass we call Africa. Um, so what? That their culture they themselves physically and their culture, which has to follow wherever they go, um, was on the continent of Africa. Not so what, but then what? So I don't mean to say so what, but I mean like then what? Like, like okay, and? You know, um, that's, you know, you know um, what I, oh, uh, 42 tribes is back. But one second, I'm going to say something. I want, I want to put a question on, on, on the floor, not to be answered right now, but I want to set up a question because I got three minutes. I'm going to let um, 42 tribes go in for a second. But I want to put this question out there. Um, how long does a, a group of people or a person, for that matter, a single individual or a group of people, how long does it take for them to stop being African once they leave the continent? Like you, you, you have a, a, an individual or a group of people who are born on the continent or whatever the case is and we were we were we were by by any sense of the word we we say that they're african how long does it take for that person or group to leave the continent and then stop being african where, where we would stop calling them african and it's and, and i say individual or group because individual obviously human beings only live you know roughly 100 let's just round it to 100 years old but i but that's for the individual but a group of people we can then expand it to generations, right? So how many generations does it take for a group of people to leave the continent of Africa for us to start to stop identifying them as African? Now, I don't want anybody to answer that right now, but that's a question that I want to put on people's minds because that's a very important question in these conversations. In the context of all human beings are have African ancestry and so I don't think people think about at what point do we do we demarcate humanity migrating out of the continent and then we we stop considering them African and what is that catalyst what is that that nexus what is that that triggering point where we where we say nope they're not they're no longer African what is that thing or a list of things that's what I want to tease out i want i want that conversation to go down but um but 42 tribes I, I know you say you back if you if you can hear me um i want you to get your um 
get your comments on. Hey, yeah, my mic is unmuted. Uh, Hotep. Hotep. Um, I want to first just um, toss out a definition for race because to me, it shows that we're in a, a puzzle. Um, and the way I define it is it's opinion and force to divide resources. And it's like one of those things where anybody can call whatever they want, whatever they want. <laughs> and so if you take it like that, then it's okay. But what about this racial wealth gap? And do I want to live in a racial caste system? Then it's like, well, how do you solve that issue? That's one of the reasons I give credit for ADOS. Because they at least outline a pathway. But ironically, they did it by taking race out of it. And that's what I mean. We're in a sort of puzzle because we're, we're dealing with something that we want to change, but it's not our paradigm. So that's, that's mostly what I wanted to bring up, but there's one other thing I wanted to touch on. And I also try to answer that question. If I, I remember it, like, when do you say that someone is no longer African after you take them out? But hold it, hold it. Before, before you move forward on, on your first point, I want to say this. Um, the diagram I showed earlier, um, the breakdown of of the flat black, like the, the racial level of flat blackness and then um, subdividing it into um, the race, the members of the black race on the continent of Africa, members of the black race here in America and then members of the black race that are everywhere else. And then and if we stick to America, we can further divide that as members of the black race who are immigrants and then members of the black race who are who are here as a result of the transatlantic slave trade and did not come here uh, through immigration, through uh, voluntary uh, immigration, uh, which is what black immigrants represent. And so we can we can see that there's a distinction. And what ADOS uh, is trying to educate people on is the necessity to do just that. To, to create these subgroups for the purposes of, re of restorative and reparative justice. And, um, but that got very, very, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, explosive and stuff, and people did not understand it. And so I think hindsight, I, I'm sure that both um, the faces of the ADOS movement would probably do things differently if they could go back uh, in time and, 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 and do have a do over. But, um, what I did notice is that I think now that the blood has been drawn too much for people to even get past the, the emotional and feeling side of things to really see the education and the, and the need to do that, even in the conversations to this very day. So I think that people that I think that the, that the, even the acronym ADOS now comes with a stigma. And so if we were to wipe away the, the label and just understand that the point is that we need to, we need a protected ethnic designation. Period. That's it. And once that is established, then I think the conversation can move forward. But go ahead. Yeah, just on, on that note with um, ADOS, it might just be that that is their legacy that they pushed out the framework and then we jumped on them like some hyenas. And then we ate up the framework, we regurgitated it out and, and had some success with it. Because, but I, I think it's it's more, there's there's something beyond that, uh, that has to be mentioned. Have you heard about the, uh, the article that Harvard did on ADOS that they rescinded? Yeah, yep. Because because you have a lot of people that, to me, they just take the notion of there being a peer review as a way to shoehorn in the logical fallacy um, where you're appealing to an authority. Because that, that was the type of thing where if you were someone 
like me, who knew who these who the founders of ADOS was and saw this thing develop firsthand, you knew that that article was lying. I'll take it a step further. It was lying beyond anything I could have imagined. Other people had to educate me on, no, no, it's, it's even this bad. So when do we take a step back and look at why would an Ivy League school try to attack a reparations advocacy, advocacy group like that? You know, that's something that I think we should always keep in context with ADOS because it shows where they are. And then in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in terms of stuff that isn't their fault, then, that, then we can look at some of the things that the founders are human about, where they've made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think just, I think we should keep that context because I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they rescinded it. But then when they rescinded the, the article, they blamed an African woman. <laughs> like they, she was the fall guy. And to me, all that was is just, and I say this as a liberal, this is the left wing version of Candace Owens. She's being used. And that's what I mean. Like there's a racial thing. <laughs> It's a puzzle where we're in a system that is governed so much by race, where they take an, where they use flak blackness against us. And this is coming from the people who would call themselves liberal. Like it is specifically the um, Kennedy, whatever foundation, Kennedy as in like President Kennedy, um, moveon.org. This is Democrats. So. But um, I'll um, I'll end it though, because I did want to um, mention I did want to answer that question. Oh, which and one? The, the one about when do I consider somebody? Okay, if you could if you could do that in a yeah. in a in a in a short and skinny way, go ahead. Yeah, because yeah, I want to I want to I, I threw it out there because I do want to have a, a whole conversation about it though. So, yeah. but yeah, get take your stab at it. What, yeah. I, what, I did want to answer that because it also. It goes into like the back and forth thing where some of these people say they're scholars when we're talking about debating about what Egyptians look like and what what who would play them in movies. When they say African, they're talking more culture. They're not African. They're black. They're talking nothing to do whatsoever in anything like it. And it, and and if we see anything that you share, like uh, the, the one one of the few things they'll give is uh, it'll be something that's not popular, like um, like female circumcision. They're like, we found that in a mummy. They must have got that from them sub-Saharan Africans. But to answer that question, I say, I say it's immediate. And that's one of the things that I kind of push back on people who, who are more, um, I would say, pro-Black to the point where they, they go too far is they would consider Cheddar Man to be African. And I'm like, Cheddar Man is eventually going to have people who lose pigment, and those are going to be the people he's related to. He's European. So to me, you become where you are because that's what your descendants will be. And so I usually say it's where you are. Now, the exception, of course, though, would be what you identify as and what you act like. But from the outside looking in, if I don't know anything else, and I'm like, okay, he moved to that place, she moved to that place because they wanted to be there, they wanted to join that place, what that people do, so that's who they are now. Well, like I said, that's and that's a that's a perspective to 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 hash out and tease out in in that discussion. So I want to have that discussion, a full on discussion and and that the, that question being the root of the discussion which is um how long does it take a group of people who are natively africans for them to leave africa at what point do they stop being do they stop be being um african I'll take a what, what 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 are the the list of triggers 
or things that are necessary for us to stop calling them African. Um, yeah, if you could do it briefly, yeah. But but again, I'm gonna revisit this. So so y'all, I hope y'all are um, y'all are up for the for the challenge when we when I want to have the um, you know more full fuller conversation about it. But go ahead. Oh, so I'll just throw some stuff out there on, on how I see it, and uh, the, the question is, when do we um, when do we determine that a group of people that leave outside of Africa become not African? And uh, right. so I would answer it like this, and I'm going to give a few different answers, right? So I believe that the more important question is how do the how do how do the people see themselves? Because whenever we're talking about history, how do we see them is one thing, right? But I think how they see themselves in that time is more, more important for the conversation. We get to argue back and forth on how we see African people and what we believe that they are today. It's kind of a different conversation. But I will say one way is through genetic markers. How long on that day, you know what I'm saying? And they have genetic markers to say, okay, they mutated and now they're not African is one way that they use it. But then you also, on the political side and law side, you have self-determination to where you you can leave somewhere and call yourself something you don't want to be identified as whatever you have also have that right and will be legit also you have religious people identify first with a religion too and don't necessarily want to be identified so it just depends on the level on the conversation like you know what i mean it just depends the angle that the person no, you- is the, the, the objective well, you're, you're absolutely right, and which is why I, I would like to have a full conversation because everything you just now said proves the, f- the fact that, that um, whether it's endonymic or exonymic, meaning whether it's self-named or, or uh, named from the outside, from, from others, no matter what, who does it, there are multiple layers to this. And you just demonstrated that because your first proposed um, statement was a genetic on the genetic la- layer because you mentioned DNA. Then your other layer was dealing with p- um, political membership. And then you had another layer, um, and I forgot what that one was, but regardless, you just demonstrated that there's different layers um, to this. And this is something that people got to understand and respect and not blur it. And what I see people do is they, they disrespect the, the lines of those layers and they just kind of just jumble it all together. And, and the great words of punk may be fucking it up. <laughs> that that's true, and so we got to straighten out that conversation. But it's but to me, it's that's a very important thing to hash out first before moving forward. Like that's that's something that that's like pulling a cart before the horse. People are trying to have conversations about what is African and what is not African without first addressing the fact of of where's the demarcation line. For 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 when something that was once African to stop being African, what what tool do we use for that? Is it is it on a biological level? Because biology does have the most firm and scientific method of doing it. And I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's because everybody who who um, be talking about DNA should know about haplogroups, right? Haplotypes and haplogroups. And what that is, a haplogroup is simply a, a coded um, numerical, alphanumeric code for a set of mutations. And, and where these mutations occurred anchors them at a po- point on the planet Earth. And wherever that mutation occurred at whatever point on the planet, that is what they label that first mutation and all the descendants from it until the next mutation occurs. So for instance, um, I'm just going to make up a a haplo haplo, uh, code. Let's say Z1XYB. That code represents a mutation that occurred among a population of people in Australia. So that mutation is first found in Australia. 
That means everybody who has that mutation would be considered biologically anchored in Australia. Therefore, they would be not African. They would be Australian biologically because that's where that mutation occurred. And then the descendants from that will, will, will spring out forth from that until another mutation occurred, distinguished enough where we give it a new name. And wherever that occurred, that'll be where those people are, are, are anchored in at. You see, so biology really has the strongest, um, more definitive um, aspect of the conversation when it comes to when it comes to that. Because what we do know is that all human beings, all living homo sapiens sapiens human beings alive today um, have African ancestry. But colloquially and, and socially, we don't call everybody on the planet Africans. But biologically, they all, we, are, we all trace back to, to the continent of Africa. So, so that's, that's what validates the question. At what point or what triggers the distinction? Like, why, why do we say Europeans are Europeans, but yet all Europeans did at one point exist in Africa through, through their ancestry? So at what point in time does it change? And and so and so what I propose, and you know, we can have a conversation later because I'm not I'm not going to go into what what I propose just yet. So we're going to have a conversation. Check check it out. So and let's 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 mix it up even more. So what do you call some people people that get colonized? Let's say let's take some Europeans, and this is a, a situation that's made up. So let's take some Europeans. Let's say they get colonized colonized uh by by let's say the europeans get colonized by uh, some native americans and now they have assimilated they are practicing like african spirituality you know what i'm saying but they practicing like africans what do you call it because we have a lot of that going on you know what i'm saying through colonization we got people that are genetically one you know what i'm saying mixing with other people here in present them practicing stuff that doesn't not not even native to them so you know what i mean this conversation get wild whenever we just stand on that surface level like that well that's you know the point I mean? that's the point of identifying the multiple layers because you got a genetic layer see these, these are like tools and i explain this all the time it's like having a tool chest if you let, let's say you have in your closet you got you got a tool chest and you got all the latest tools the expensive tools you got a screw gun you got a you got a circle saw you got you got everything, you know, all the electronic gadgets, everything. And that's that's available to you. But right now you just want to fix a leak under the kitchen sink. You're not going to use all the tools in the chest to do that. You're going you're only going to use the tools that relate to the job at hand. Right. So you got to you probably use a, um, a Phillips screwdriver to do the coupling. You probably use a saw to saw the PVC pipe. You need some glue, you know, all that kind of stuff to, to patch the leak under the kitchen sink. You're not going to use um, a screw gun. You're not going to use, you know, all the tools in your chest. So this is something that people have to understand that certain tools are, are match certain inquiry or research questions. So when, when we want to identify a population of people, there's certain tools that we supposed to use for certain research questions. And, and people are using the wrong tools. It's like somebody using a screw gun to perform open heart surgery. That's what's going on in the, con in the uh, social community. That's what's going on, and, and we gotta stop doing that. DNA is not the answer um, all the time. People wanna resort to DNA. I don't know if it's the sound heavy or, or, or whatever, but people always go to DNA route, ancestry route, but it's not. Ethnography, should be a focus of everybody in the conscious community. Study ethnography. What ethnography is, what's the difference between ethnography and ethnology? The difference between those two under the umbrella of anthropology, cultural anthropology, or social cultural anthropology. We all need to get become more masterful at that. Then we'll have better conversations. Because because we'll know where biology comes in the in the picture, where linguistics come in the picture where sociocultural anthropology comes in the picture and where archaeology comes in the picture.
yeah. I think I already uh, said archaeology. Those, those are all the, the main branches of anthropology. And within sociocultural anthropology, you further break it down into eth- ethnography and um, ethnology and things like that. That's where we need to be. And that's what people need to understand. Yeah, I, I agree with you completely that, you know, context is a big deal in the community. The proper, the proper tools slash words, you know what I mean? Being in the right field of study of this thing and, and, and keeping it in context, man. <laughs> and it's hard for you to slow down those conversations. People think they above them. Whenever you do try to slow them down, I hear you try to slow down the conversations and people think they so far past it. And it just be, it's not funny. It's just kind of exhausting because they want to have these conversations, but you have not even got the verbiage right so in order to even discuss them, discuss the topic. So it's just, it's hard, man. And I appreciate you taking the time and going over definitions and taking it the long way, even though you are iron lung, which I will, but it is appreciated, yeah. man. It is. Now, I have to be. I, I'll eat that. I have to be. And and people will get it eventually because it's it can't be done w- without it. And, and, and you know, a, a lot could be said. I, I could I could um, take it further on on how this stuff should be even delivered and everything. But I but I'm serious. I, w- I want people to really, really understand um, ethnography. Matter of fact, I have it on. Let me just put it on the screen real quick. Um, just so people will get it. Okay, that is the wrong one. Um, hold on, give me a second. That was the wrong one. Let's see. Ethnography. Where is it? Is it this one? Nope, that's not it. Give me a second. Ah, right, here we go. Okay, I want everybody to see this real quick. Take this message. Yeah, Zane, he said DNA uh, mostly means does not apply. <laughs> I was going to pick on Desharab. Desharab, see, he's, he's his own primary. And that's what I'm saying. That's why I can't take people uh, serious. <laughs> that's your is, is a trip, man. He's he's off the chain. But um, I want people to I want people to to go. You know, like I, I'm not um, suggesting that people need a, a degree in in anthropology or ethnography. It would be great if you did. You know, if you have a degree or whatever. But that's not what I'm I'm saying uh, has to happen. But at least become familiar. And so Wikipedia is available to everybody. And what I suggest is people to start there, look up anthropology and its five major subdivisions, and then start reading the articles that branch out. And when you get to ethnography, um, take a, 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 a more focused interest in ethnography and ethnology. And then you'll, you'll get to understand what tools are necessary when we talk about people, what makes a people a people. And we'll 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 see how um, these things interrelate and how we can more accurately describe people, whether they self-describe a certain way or or is externally done. That's that becomes irrelevant uh, to that kind of conversation, because, for example, no animal names itself what it is like. There is no elephant on the planet Earth that called that ever called themselves an elephant. We human beings call elephants elephants. And we human beings know what we're talking about and how we categorize them. Same thing with lions, tigers, bears, and whatever. No animal on the planet Earth called itself what we call it. So exo, the, 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 um, the act of, of exonymically naming things is not the problem. The problem is us setting up the inclusionary and exclusionary rules and making them very airtight. That is the key, not the label. It's the it's the um, the rules. And so what I want to point out about ethnography, though, is ethnography. This is what's interesting, y'all, is. The word ethnography comes from the Greek ethnos, which which means a nation. Or a group of people. Right. But in our vernacular today. We have a, we, we added another layer on onto this hierarchy. We have something called n- nationality. But when we walk backwards in time, the our level of nationality was was originally the level of ethnicity. 
So so we actually created a new layer within the hierarchy of identity. And I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. So an ethnic group at, was at one point a nation. And that nation exhibits um, a certain characteristic and behavior, co a collective behavior that we call culture. And so these distinct cultures or distinct ethnic groups um, were nations. And this is why when you talk to elder um, people on the continent or indigenous people, they get confused when you introduce these other layers because in their worldview, them themselves and their membership with their people is all that in a bag of chips. Like that's their whole world. And they wouldn't have it any other way. And there's an article I, I'll pull up another time where where this this um young young um person, I think he was from Nigeria, where he's he's explaining that he was talking to his grandmother and it, and he was trying to explain to his grandmother that she's an African and she wasn't having it. She was saying, No, I'm not. She was, you know, she said what she was and so on and so forth. And that was very, very interesting and very, very telling. But for us to understand it, we have to understand what ethnography is and ethnology. Okay. And the differences. So I just want everybody, I want to bring this to people's attention. I know everybody heard the word ethnic and ethnography, but, but take some time and read through and, and, and more importantly, go to the, um, the references and citations and pick up some books. You know that they recommend. If you if you if I scroll down to the bottom of this article, you you'll get all the references and things. But I want everybody to you know kind of become familiar with that because when I want to have this conversation, I'm I'm trying to go in, and I don't and I don't want to put the car in reverse. I'm trying to go in and to keep it pushing, keep it moving forward. I'm not gonna be arguing about, about people on on race or any of that stuff. When people bring up race in these conversations, I'm 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 leaving. I'm going out the door. That's just it, man. But um, yeah, I want to end it though because we we've been on a lot, a lot longer than I wanted to. But I appreciate forty two uh, due diligence, and um, I know Ron's son Ron's son came through. He couldn't um, stay at all, and then everybody uh, in the chat. Can I sign off with something quick? Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Um, it's it's been interesting, um, and uh, I just wanted to see. If you saw my last um, post um, on the Amon Ross Squad Facebook group, uh, no, well, I mean I may have. What, uh, refresh my memory. What, what, what was the title? It starts off with African Americans are more ancient North African than Coptics. Wait for it. Wait for it. And ancient Egyptians. Wait, say it again. I said African Americans are more ancient North African than Coptics and ancient Egyptians. Oh yeah. Um did okay. You, did you I'm, see I'm, that? No, nah, no, nah, I didn't. I'm, I'm gonna have to check that out because based on knowing your previous post and I believe a con a video you did I saw on your channel, you were showing the gradients like you chose like a, a, a test set of, of individuals and, and you went through their um genetics and stuff like that and I, I you know if i'm not mistaken i think that that post must be related to something like that it is but it's it's also something that's kind of new and it's the concept of a basal uh north african so it's like the ancestors of north africans and they consider them to be ancient north africans and in two ancestry tests and well one was a model like using a, a, a tree diagram. And the other one was, um, I forget the name of this ancestry test. It's like, it, it, uh, it just, it outlines a ancient North Africa. Well, not really ancient. This is more recent. This is like North African Neolithic farmer population. And that's where uh, African Americans are more related to Neolithic, which I would still, in relation to ancient Egyptians, is still ancient. So it's mm -hmm. a couple sources showing that, and it, and I've actually seen it from a third. The third is what made me well. Based on this, I bet that 
African Americans are more related to this population than Coptics. So I looked up a, a Coptics uh, ancestry test and look, compared it to myself, and that's what's similar to the other video, and somebody who's more African than me. Well, I'm going to definitely really check really it out because I, I think you're about to stir the pot with that one. So I'm going to check it out so I can keep up with it because <laughs> I, I can already see some. Um, some but I think I made it pretty simple because it's really just one source in that ancestry company. But there is a okay. third, so I might add that. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to check it out. I do want to address this uh, this um, comment that caught my attention. Uh, Posterior Thought says, um, when you pay too much attention to categories, you can't differentiate facts that fall within the same category. You know, that's the age old saying, um, can't see the forest for the trees type of thing. And um, yeah, I think we have to gain skills in understanding systems and understanding a holistic, like when we, when we see the whole, we see its parts and um, and the parts for the whole. So that's like a unity within multiplicity and multiplicity within a unity. We just have to get better at doing that. And I think that would straighten out a lot of things too. But with that though, I'm gonna have to definitely end this because um, if I don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on running my mouth. So um, I appreciate everybody tuning in. And if you have any thoughts or whatever that um, and whatnot, you can leave a comment under the video. And whether you're watching this um, as an archive, you know, playback or whatever case is, you know, if you got to the end and hear me say this, uh, leave any comments or whatnot. I will revisit the video and address comments. And sometimes I'll let the comments build up in under under our videos and then I'll go live to to answer questions in the comments. So I may have a, um, a comment answering live session. So, you know, you all be on the lookout for um, uh, for that. And look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, trying to start trouble. Nah, I, I'm not having it. <laughs> I already been on here too long. And I know Asar is just doing that the best. Uh, for real. He got to be. Can't be serious. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to go back and check out Asar's video because cause, um, I saw that he went live uh, with a Q&A. And um, I'll, I'll, you know, take a peek and see what, what was... Um, what was discussed and plus if people didn't check out asar did a video thursday or friday um with you know something along the lines of egypt stole um egypt stole this culture from africa or, or ancient egyptian culture is stolen from africa or africans or something like that and and and, and i already see i already know where asar is going with that so i know that was a doozy and unfortunately i wasn't able to see it um live but you know i'm gonna go back and watch and watch all those. Okay, he said Friday. So he did it Friday. Yeah, definitely go back and check that out. Because now I'm going to warn y'all. Now listen, I have not seen it. But I'm going to tell you how how I just I already know what Asar going, uh, where he's going. Asar, and he's, he's on here to correct me. He's in the chat. Asar is conceding to the logic of, of, of the others. And using their logic against them. And it's, it's something that's called in, um, in argument uh, theory and, and in debating and, and logic uh, where you um, prove something by a contradiction. And I forget the exact technical term for it. But I guarantee you that Asar is, um, is going that route. Cause that's that's just a saw. A saw likes to start trouble like that. Yep, definitely. I guarantee you. And when I watch it, I'm gonna be like, "Yep, see, there you go. See, there you go." Can, can I reiterate on a point you made before you go? Or, oh, what's that? Um, I just I just wanted to reiterate on the point that you made how that race, even though that it's a social construct, that it still can have effects on people. Um, whether it be good or bad effects um we need to start applying that same logic to all of these terms that we are discussing and redefine um so like to to me i'm gonna start freestyling now and i'm hurry up so you can get on up out of here is that like to me that's that's a form of spiritual spirituality when then we talk about things that don't exist and intangible that can still affect us to me that's then we're talking about spirituality. 
And I think people hold these constructs so firm in their minds that they don't know that they are malleable, right? We can we can redefine these ideals because they exist in our minds and we manifest them in the way that we want. So I just want people to keep that on their mind and their heart that these things are not concrete that you see and you do have the power, but just be knowledgeable, knowledgeable of the of the field that you're trying to, you know, reframe. So I just want to encourage everybody to do the same as that you are doing. Well, yeah, you need to be a part of the conversation um, whenever I go back over what a word is. And I, I think you would you would you would find that interesting and, and, and um, enjoy the conversation because what you just said fits in, in that conversation, because in order to redefine a term, there's there's a process to do it. And it's not as easy. It's not as straightforward as people may think. And, you know, so I think that you'd be you definitely want to be a part of that conversation. I, I've, I've, I've gone over it before. So you may be able to check it on the archive, but I'm, I do plan on going over that again. Um, what is a word? And when we say things mean something, what is what does that really mean? Or defined as what does that mean? The difference between denotation, connotation, all those kinds of things, you know, um, because because I can use a use case with the word um, Negro. Or the, the Spanish word for black, negro, negro, and then a derogatory term, how we embraced it. And now we use it as a term in endearment and all that kind of stuff. I could use those use cases to to prove, you know, to demonstrate these points. But I, I'll go over that another time. Definitely. Um, so anyway, um, oh, it's posteriori. Posteriori. I'm trying to read the comments. All right, but I, I appreciate everybody tuned in. And, um, yep, I'm going to go. Hopefully everybody enjoyed their Easter. Um if you did, you know, you do celebrate that good stuff. Um, yep, Jesus died and rose again. I think that's the that's the heart. Today is the most important day of Christianity. Really. Not the birth, but the actual death of uh Jesus and the fact that he rose. The fact that he rose and, and he was a willing sacrifice um for everybody's sins and all that good stuff. So man, I think I think Christians are very much in a good mood um now. So if you have Christian friends and stuff, Hit him up, man. Maybe he'll borrow some money. <laughs> right there. Everybody, everybody's chipping and happy. But anyway, hey, peace to everybody. I uh, appreciate y'all tuned in. And um, 42 Tribes, yeah, I'm going to check out the um, article you, uh, post you put up so I can stay up with that. MK, you got any last words? Um, yeah, I'll just say um, do what to everybody that participated, especially those who dropped in on the panel, uh, due diligence um, and 42 tribe. And do you have anybody else? Oh, yeah. And, and uh, obviously, <laughs> St. Chris, uh, Christopher with us. And hopefully other people get to join the panel next time. And uh, the last thing is just make sure that you subscribe to this particular YouTube channel. You click the bell so that you're notified whenever we go live and you share this particular video and all the other videos that we have on our archives. Share them with other people. And uh, also, uh, you know, uh, you know, put a, you know, hit the like button on this video. So, you know, that helps um you know, it reach more people on, you know, with the YouTube algorithm. So definitely do that because a lot of people need to hear this kind of stuff that we talk about. And then just to make sure that, you know, we de -sudify, sudify, uh everybody that we can or a lot as we can. And also make sure that um, you, if you haven't joined our Facebook group page that you join, we definitely are going to be extra active in there. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, do well and get an effort or back an effort if you're in the morning time. You said that when you go to chemist school, you became more alert. You made wake up. Your spirit wake up, and you became a more human being. That's your character is built in a school.
classical, classical studies. Uh, you may, we must know Medu nature. You see. Maybe in the future we need to know some meritic too. We need to know Medu nature. achievement in Kemet for me is education. The way they think, they build, and they practice their education is very unique in history. Without education, I believe there will be no Kemet. Mm -hmm. 